is okay there sir uh, surrounding your places and all uh, somewhat here it is also uh, oh. difficult position sir okay okay and especially government has handed over the okay some of the buildings from the college as a quarantine centers mm -hmm. okay and that is okay. also major problem we don't invite the faculty even faculty also mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some of the colleges in ap so they are uh, invited the faculty to do that online classes hello sir sir am i audible sir your voice is audible sir sir is not in... uh, maybe sir our network issues yes sir Are you getting? Yes, sir. Okay. So once you tell, then I'll start, sir. Yeah, sir. Sure. Okay. We will wait for two only five minutes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, no problem. Then we will slowly the participants are yeah, joining. Yeah, it's correct, correct, correct. Yes. Okay. Sir. So we are going to start the online classes on uh, September first onwards, sir. For our uh, B Tech, UZ, and PG, and everything. We are already started, sir. Last oh. ten days back we started. Oh, good, good. Uh -huh. For second year and third year we are st we started, sir. Okay. For yeah. final year, sir, placement training are uh, going on. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, today actually online Cap Gemini placements drive is going on, okay. sir. Okay. Then what about uh, fees, sir? Uh, students are paying. Uh, Uh, full, no sir, uh, no, full. no. We are not uh, eligible to ask. <laughs> <laughs> Then we are managing. Uh, uh, that is a uh, difficult issue, sir. Uh, hmm? That is a difficult issue. Uh, But is fortunate it? thing is, as a management is a uh, that is a uh, yeah, good vision it. is a very good high vision is there, sir. Good, good. Okay. So luckily, up to hmm. now we are uh, we took that every month full salary, sir. Oh, good. So, in that point of view, management is supporting nicely. Uh, management okay. in the initial days is they conducted one meeting, sir. Okay. So don't worry about all these things. Anyway, yes, I will. Uh, I will give that your salaries. Okay. Don't worry about all. Okay. We'll That's good. Fully, we will. We will fight with uh, this particular pandemic situation. Okay. Remaining all these things, you don't worry about uh, right. financial things. We will there. We are all in one family. Correct. Still there. That is the motivation. That support is there from the good, management. Good. But at the same time, we can't insist the students to pay at a time first installment entire fees, sir. And yeah. one more, our oh. disadvantage in AP, sir, we don't have to write. The uh -huh. reason why the entire part is should be given by the government oh, as ah, a fee the rules and regulations. Fee structure. Fee reimbursement. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, For all okay. the students, they are issuing the fee reimbursement. Oh. Then the government is paying. Uh, yes. Uh, timely, sir. They are paying. No, timely. no, 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 sir. <laughs> <laughs> Then that is on our side. <laughs> that is major problem again. Uh, major problem. <laughs> okay, okay. Right, right. So this is uh, sponsored by uh, MHRD, sir. Uh, no, no, sir. AACT, sir. AACT. Okay. Actually, we applied as a short-term training program as a physical mode, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, we received that amount also in the month of January. Oh, okay, good. But mm -hmm. uh, we want to go for conduction, and we are already announced in the month of uh, March, twenty first to twenty seventh, fourth. We are already announced, and we distributed that uh, brochure. Brochure and everything. Yeah, registration and okay. Yes, everything completed at that moment. Mm -hmm. uh, we received a five, around fifty participants are there. The oh, limit good. is only forty. But mm -hmm. we receive we have uh, the uh, participants are fifty uh, participants. Good number of participation is there. Okay, okay. 
So, but yes. unfortunately, we stopped that particular because of this pandemic. <laughs> pandemic, COVID effect. <laughs> COVID effect. Okay. Then uh, ACT offers that, why can't you conduct that instead of a single series? Okay. You should go for three series. Yeah, yeah. That, that same amount can be utilized in a... Same amount correct. should be utilized for three short-term training, correct. online training programs. Okay. That is true. Correct. This is the second same answer. Okay. Because uh, online is uh, expenditure will be little more little bit less when you go for uh, practically and uh, eye to eye contact you have to provide the accommodation that's correct, sir. That's correct. Uh, actually number uh, of participation uh, yes. point of view it is good sir yes but uh, taking that from the knowledge is somewhat me you what you said is 100 percent correct correct yes Sir, it has both advantages and disadvantages sir. yes sir. Uh, financially this is good for government because, yes sir. With the same amount, they can run at least two, two three workshops yes. uh, with the same budget. But uh, how much they are going to learn means physically when uh, attending classes, they learn more, sir, because uh, they are away from the, their duties and family members and they stay in uh, uh, campus. Yes, and, sir. Uh, so uh, more interaction will be there and uh, definitely they don't have the other works. They will learn something. But yes. now sometimes they will switch on, they will go <laughs> uh, we don't know whether they are really yes, yes, uh, following or not. Uh, so it, it is going to be another thing. But those are interested, they can uh, learn, no doubt. But uh, a feedback point of view, uh, this is somewhat uh, uh, not good. Actually, in the first short series, sir, okay. the participants are very, uh, number of participants are also more. Okay, okay. Minimum uh, around 200 participants every day they joined. Mm -hmm. Okay. But now what is the situation is for the for all the faculty members because of the classwork. Uh, yeah, yeah. There. That is. Uh, yes. So, uh, sir, we will again join after completion of our online class. They put they want, they are giving the messages also like that, sir. Oh, correct. That is. But anyway, uh, they joined slowly. They are joined, sir. Correct. correct. Uh, uh, with, uh, uh, up to last moment they are staying sir our uh, for our participant for our okay, program. okay okay to the last moment they stay and then they want to clarify okay. their doubts okay, so that good. is a, I, in my point of view the sessions are going well went on very well sir okay good good, good. even recently also i gave uh, online uh, lectures uh, at one is at uh, kerala other one is uh, in ap only okay. uh, there also response is good only so so frequently we are engaged with these workshops. <laughs> sir. Okay. Sir, we will start, sir. Priyanka. Okay, sir. Yeah. In right the right. participants are joining, sir. Priyanka, right, right, sir. I request okay. I request kindly give the uh, sir introduction about the today's presentation. Once again, all the participants, once again, welcome to the uh, day three afternoon session uh, as a AACT sponsored online short term training program on second series on electromagnetics microwaves rf and antenna design through hfss so i request priyanka to give the uh, introduction about our oh, today's yeah. speaker yeah then we will start the session okay, sir, sir priyanka sir thank you sir Good afternoon to everyone. I welcome you all to the afternoon session of online STTP. In this session, we have Dr. A. Prakash Rao, sir, with us. Dr. A. Prakash Rao, sir, obtained his bachelor's degree in electronics and communication engineering from Nagarjuna University, Andhra Pradesh, India, in 1994. And he pursued his master's degree from PEC, Pondicherry, India, with electronics and communication engineering as specialization in the year 1998. His doctoral degree is from National Institute of Technology, Warangal, India in the year 2018. He has more than 22 years of experience in teaching at various organizations. Currently, he is in the he is working in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering as Associate Professor at NIT uh, Warangal, India. He had about 20 research papers at his credit in various international and national journals as well as conferences. His areas of interest include signal processing, smart antenna systems and optimization techniques. He is a ISTE life member and also a member in IEEE. He guided nearly 40 UG by PG students and presently guiding two research scholars under his supervision. He conducted nearly six faculty development programs as a coordinator 
and he is also handling handling various administrative responsibilities at the institute level as well as at department level in nit some of them are uh, department pg a acs coordinator for 4 years department ece association faculty advisor for 3 years department ug by pg dsc member till date and associate dean academic for 2 years convocation ug registration committee member for 3 years and member in uh, jo ssc admissions 2018 to 19 he is also the reviewer for some of the sci journals he attended a one month training program at signal processing laboratory usc los angeles usa here uh, he also attended uh, many faculty development programs and many work sponsored by mhrd he has also delivered uh, many invited talks at various reputed uh, universities as well as engineering colleges so many times i cordially welcome you to the session sir it is a great you, pleasure to have you here thank you madam thank you thank, thank you. you sir thank you sir one small request what is the case is our participants regularly what they are doing is yeah. sir they uh, they are uh, for smooth running of the our http okay so their microphones will be in off position sir they Good. also they stop their videos okay and meanwhile if they have any doubts uh, any queries are there they will put into the chat box, chat box. Sir. good good so then after completion of your complete session okay. the one by one question will asked by me or sometimes the participants may ask directly okay sir okay, okay sir this good this is our regular just only for your yeah, is like that only then only it will, it will go smoothly otherwise a yes, lot sir. of disturbance will be there right yes, right. Yes, right thank sir. you sir thank you right, please sir. continue sir yeah good good yeah uh, good afternoon to all i am very happy to see you through online and uh, registering uh, uh, this uh, antenna course during pandemic time and i understand uh, you are very much interested to learn something during this situation also so as a teacher we have to learn uh, continuously so you should have that type of uh, mentality uh, keep on you have to learn and you have to deliver nicely to the uh, students then only uh, students will appreciate uh, uh, very nicely uh, and you have to update the technology and the knowledge uh, day to day so as a teacher you have to learn uh, continuously now today we are going to start the optimization techniques in beam forming so they have given the topic uh, on this optimization techniques in beam forming this is a very interesting topic optimization techniques in beam forming is very very essential and it's going to be used in a Uh, in radar and uh, cellular mobile communication and and so on so before going to see this uh, what do you mean by optimization techniques and is it a new word or no it is a familiar thing well known word and whenever you are go to uh, market to buy something uh, you knowingly or unknowingly you are going to use the optimization technique in a day to day life uh, when you are going to take the decision and behind that optimization techniques will going to be plays a role to take the uh, nice decision on that uh, process so similarly here how to use this optimization technique in our field to get a, a desired pattern that is our goal so i hope that you understand the importance of the optimize optimization you want to buy something from the market and you have some money and you have this much that much with all these constraints are there you have to meet all these things and try to get the optimum results or optimum things so if you are unable to do that then you are not using the optimization and you can't uh, utilize the time and money and resources and all these things uh, so similarly here also we have to get the uh, results uh, optimally in a specified time because my channel is highly dynamic it changes uh, Uh, continuously so i have to get the results the desired results within the frame work so i have to go for optimization technique otherwise it is not possible to do that so i hope that you understand the meaning of the optimization still if you are not unable to understand what do you mean by optimization i'll give one more example clearly maybe you are a head of the uh, family member and your wife is asked to get something from the market and you have some money and all these things and you don't know how to utilize the uh, time and money and to get all these things uh, then after coming back from the shopping uh, you will get so many left and rights so idiot you don't know not idiot sorry so you don't know 
uh, you, you have that much experience, you are a professor and all, uh, you don't know how to buy all these things and all. The reason is you are not utilizing the optimization technique in, a, in the right way. So to bring the things and all. Similarly, if you go to any shopping and all, especially ladies, they are going to buy the something from the market and they are going to uh, get it the things within the time. So there they are going to utilize the optimization technique. So within the frame where you have to get the results. So I want red color sari, this border, that border, all these things, so I, and this much amount. So you have to keep in your mind uh, cost and uh, quality and all these things. With the, together, you have to pick up the a nice one or optimal thing. If you are unable to pick up, then your time, your, everything is going to be wasted. Again, you have to go to market. Again, you have to spend that. So resources are very, very uh, valuable and you have to utilize the resources in effectively to get the desired factor. Now we are coming to the picture what how to handle this optimization technique in beam forming. This is my outline of uh, presentation, motivation, problem statement, introduction, and organization of the topics. I would like to address LMS, GA, DE, Taguchi, TLB, DOA, PSO, and so on. And finally, conclusion and references. So how much it is possible that I'm trying to cover uh, today. And if it is not possible, whenever I will get the opportunity at that time, I will try to address these things. My, idea is uh, how much you learn is important how much cover is not the uh, great thing so once we learn something and based on that you can learn the new thing also simply if you have got the, all the things and be, but you are unable to understand is a waste of time at the end of the lecture at least if you are understand a small delta and that delta is enough for you to go for to understand the new algorithm so that is my uh, idea behind that presentation so try to follow me and try to understand uh, all these algorithms. Because if you go through these algorithms, uh, if you take any algorithm, either LMS or GA or uh, evolutionary algorithm, whatever with algorithm, if you take it, uh, basically uh, four or five operations are involved. One is selection of the uh, solution candidates. We are going to say I have one problem. I want to get the solution. Uh, for that solution, uh, how to get that solution? So to get the solution, initially you have to generate some population. So initial population you have, you have to be generate. Then from the population, you have to find the cost function, means fitness function or objective function. What do you want? You want to minimize the error or you maximize the thing or what do you want to, from the function? So first you should know that uh, your cost function clearly, you have to define. From the cost function, then you have to apply all these populations into that and find out what is the uh, fitness value and all these things. And from that, you have to identify which one is good and all these things. Then you have to uh, discard it if they are not performing well. And again, you have to modify their operations and all using some crossover or mutation or some operations. Then we'll get the new population. Uh, new population is uh, uh, earlier, it is not existing in that. Then you have to replace that old population with the new. Then again, you have to repeat the operation and it goes on like that, iteration by iteration. So as a whole, if you take it, uh, any algorithm, one is selection, then another one is cost function. With the help of the cost function, you are going to find the fitness function. What is the fitness? And using that, you have to identify best one and remaining you have to truncate it. And if you are not happy with that, uh, then you have to modify their uh, structure and fine tune it and get the uh, desired uh, output. So these are the steps involved uh, in a step-by-step -step and iteration by iteration. You take any algorithm, uh, hardly you're going to see these steps only. And algorithm to algorithm, terminologies are different. In some cases, they are going to call it as a weight. In some cases, they are going to call it as a population. In some other case, they are going to call it as a target. In some other case, experiment. Like that, terminals are different and the different wordings are they're going to use. In some play, uh, in a PSO, they are going to use uh, a velocity position and all. And in a differential evaluation, they are going to find the difference between the agents. So in a GA, it is a, a, among the population. So in a Taguchi method, it is a, based on the experiment. So li like that, the terminals are slightly different and more or less these operations are going to be involved. So if you understand at least four or five algorithms 
and uh, analyzing and finding the new things for the new uh, algorithm is not a big task so based on the time how much it is possible for me uh, i am trying to cover these algorithms lms gade taguchi and so on then what is the motivation if you take that uh, top uh, left corner uh, we have a dipole antenna and it radiates the energy in a 360 degrees certain applications i need uh, but uh, certain applications i don't want to radiate my energy completely 360 degrees uh, so if you take the all india radio and i need to radiate the signal in a 360 degrees because my customers are there uh, in the, in and around the uh, station so i have to send the signal to each and every corner in all the directions so i have to radiate the, my signal in all the directions but whereas I'm, when i'm taking the class in the, uh, my uh, classroom my energy should be towards uh, my students i don't want to uh, spread the energy towards the ba blackboard when i'm facing the student see there i don't want to spread the energy 360 degrees so i want to focus my energy towards the my student but when i'm going to address uh, in a public domain as in that my students are asking doubts in a, uh, in a corridor and uh, students are gathered around me uh, around my then i have at the time my energy should radiate in a 360 degrees so based on the application when i am in the group and when i am addressing something to the students and they are in the, around my table then my signal should uh, radiate 360 degrees there, there i need to generate in a 360 degrees when i am in the class my energy should be towards the students no need of uh, radiating back side so based on the application uh, we have to find whether we want to radiate 360 degrees or particular direction and also uh, so now if you take the down bottom one and uh, this is the uh, cellular mobile communication tower and uh, your entire ge uh, geographical area covered by that cell is divided into sector and to cover the sector uh, we are going to use uh, a systematic uh, antenna structure and similarly this side you can see right corner bottom and uh, to study the space uh, we are going to use uh, antenna structures in an array fashion to study the uh, space and uh, astronomy and all so based on the application we are going to arrange the uh, antennas and uh, the size and everything is going to be decided now you can see that here uh, here the energy is radiated in 360 degrees uh, for for my application especially in mobile communication i don't want to radiate energy in uh, all direction because my user is in particular direction let's say at 30 degrees so i want to generate the signal only at 30 degrees i don't want to uh, generate the rest of the directions so now we can see here the right uh, bottom corner then here uh, one is a desired signal the desired unit the other one is interference unit so where the interference is coming uh, in that direction a uh, force i am going to place a null and whereas the other, other direction where the user is there uh, my entire energy is focused uh, towards the uh, user so you have to be very careful uh, now my desired pattern is like this so to get the desired pattern i, I have to feed the, my signal to the antenna in a, in such a way that to get this uh, pattern simply you can't connect it so how to do that how to handle this uh, pattern so this i have to control my beam so this is a beam forming i am going to forming the my beam according my uh, uh, users uh, requirement so based on the desired uh, thing i am going to adjust my pattern to get the pattern we are going to adjust the weights for the system so finally we will get the desired thing so to get it this desired pattern uh, i have to feed the signal and here i am going to use the optimization technique i hope that you understand the what do you mean by optimization technique where you are going to use and what do you mean by beam forming and how to handle both beam forming and optimization now before going to get it you should have the complete idea of that you, you see you have to get the interest without interest if you learn the uh, subject directly is a meaningless so you have to see that uh, smart and beam forming versus uh, omnidirectional and we will get a high gain uh, since you are going to focusing the beam towards particular direction so we will get the gain what is the advantage of this gain when you are focusing entire energy in a particular direction the coverage area is increases uh, coverage area is 
going to be increased because entire energy is focused then coverage area is increased this is one advantage and if you are not going to focus entire uh, energy into one particular direction and it will radiate in other directions then the coverage area is going to be reduced so to improve the coverage area uh, i have to focus in a particular direction so i am going to uh, beam forming them my beam in a, a particular direction and uh, the other one and thing is uh, side lobe cancellation uh, we can suppress the side lobes in the previous diagram we can see that uh, we have suppressed the uh, all the side lobes or we are controlling some extent so to minimize this uh, side lobes so to so suppress the side lobes uh, we have to handle the uh, beam forming properly so when i'm going to handle the beam forming properly i can control the side lobes uh, or i can minimize or i can cancel so and not only that we can place the null and you can steer the null also by using uh, uh, this uh, second point uh, side lobe cancellation and uh, null steering uh, what is the achieving you are going to get it what is the advantage why you are going concentrating this means the signal to noise ratio is going to be improved and interference is reduced uh, here you have to be very careful say for example you are going to uh, uh, get the signal from the uh, say so take the classroom environment your boy is going to get the signal from uh, uh, from the teacher uh, directly because it's a face to face so directly is getting the energy fine at the same time he is going to receive the signal from different corners uh, from the fan sound and from the corridor uh, from the nearby students somebody is talking uh, and all these uh, uh, signals are coming uh, except this we are going to call as a noise so all the signals are coming and uh, due to that uh, he has to uh, concentrate a little bit more to understand the subject so if he is unable to control the side lobes properly if he is unable to control the side lobes then he is going to be disturbed see some students they are able to understand they are able to enjoy the lecture and they will concentrate and some of the students are they are unable to do that the reason is here uh, inside uh, the brain neurons are there and there they are going to adjust the weights uh, by adjusting the weights some students are concentrating and some of them are unable to concentrate well, both are same level uh, but uh, one fellow one boy is uh, good another boy is not at all uh, uh, unable to concentrate and uh, the lecture is ca common to all so when the environment is on the same and uh, both are in the same energy levels but one boy is concentrating another boy is not concentrating means this boy is uh, uh, tuned properly to the class uh, at the same time uh, even in the sound coming from the fan or the sound coming from the cardio or somewhere else and all he, he is uh, uh, in that direction uh, his weights are less so that uh, he is uh, receiving the signal but not uh, affecting his uh, system whereas the other boy is uh, not at all controlling the side lobes and all he is receiving lecture as well as the noise and all and finally he is lose the concentration so if we reduce the side lobes as much as possible and interferences can be minimized so that is the meaning of that and how can you say uh, snr is going to be improved and uh, system capacity is also is going to be improved see here uh, when the noise is reduced then uh, very little amount of energy is required to transmit it uh, that is also an one advantage thing and if you go for uh, uh, communication systems we have one well known formula um, in communication theory c is equal to b log 1 plus s by n so now snr is improved uh, due to that your channel capacity is going to be increased c is equal to b log 1 plus s by n so if you correlate the, the, those statements here the boy will understand the importance of uh, what is snr and how it is uh, channel capacity is going to be improved so we have to control the side lobe and uh, and you have to steer the nulls to improve the uh, system performance then at the same time you are directly contacting the signal uh, sending the information so you can save the energy and uh, when you are directly sending and the battery life is going to be improved then uh, uh, di diversity gain uh, it, it, you have seen uh, uh, different mechanisms uh, multiple axis concept cdma tdma uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, yes uh, in especially in a satellite mobile communication uh, we have the different uh, multiple axis uh, 
TDMA, FDMA, and CDMA. There we are going to handling the frequency. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you are handling properly uh, different time slots, uh, frequency slots. Uh, simultaneously, we are going to use uh, uh, in a CDMA and all. But here we are going to use the uh, SDMA, space division multiple axis. We are going to utilize the space. We are going to handle properly space. We are going to divide and uh, we are handling. Uh, the space is going to be used in, in such a way that to, to transmit the signal uh, simultaneously to the a number of users. So we are going to use the SDMA. These are uh, presently many are uh, doing in this direction to improve the performance or to increase the capacity. Then uh, multipath mitigation. This is another important thing. And this is, is not only benefits in the mobile communication, it also uh, used this uh, multipath mitigation in uh, radar applications using beamforming concepts. So what, what is the advantage of uh, this uh, multipath uh, mitigation and all, why you are going? Because direct path, uh, we, we are getting signal directly. And along with, uh, we'll get it some uh, reflection signal, uh, maybe from the huge towers and uh, reflections from the tall, tall buildings and all these things. Uh, and uh, due to that, a delay spread is uh, occurring. So you know, if you handle properly, and once we minimize the multi-path, and if you have a direct contact, and this multi-path can be minimized, uh, and the delay spread, uh, spread also can be controlled. So due to that, uh, the signal quality is going to be increased, because uh, you are getting direct signal, and there is no multi-path effect, and the quality of the signal is going to be uh, increased. Well, we have received signal, and again, multi-path, phase delay, amplitude distortion will be there, and your desired signal is affected by phase and uh, uh, phase as well as the uh, magnitude uh, uh, due to multipath, and uh, hence uh, signal is going to be affected. So when you are uh, controlling the multipath, uh, and there is no much uh, uh, delay uh, due to uh, phase and uh, amplitude, so this can be controlled to some extent by using multipath uh, mitigation, so that uh, uh, signal quality is going to be improved. Uh, similarly, in the MIMO systems, uh, we are going to use the beam formings to uh, improve the uh, signal quality, especially in uh, uh, nowadays uh, 5G and beyond 5G, uh, they are going to use the MIMO concepts. Multiple inputs and multiple uh, uh, outputs uh, uh, structure is going to be used to improve the uh, channel capacity and uh, signal performance and other things. So, and the, finally, uh, to enhance the uh, geolocation services, uh, we have to use the beamforming uh, to estimate the uh, angle of arrival and uh, direction of finding. So we can improve the direction finding and uh, angle of arrival estimation. So with that, uh, geolocations are uh, going to be predicted more accurately. So that is the reason we are going for the beamforming uh, when compared with the omnidirectional antennas. Don't think that omnidirectional antennas are not at all useful. Don't create the conclusions like that. Uh, particular application, this is useful. Certain applications, omni directions are uh, required. So, if we say strongly, people will think that only um, uh, beamforming is essential, not like that. Based on the application, we have to. Right now, comparison is like that. Now, we have to see that uh, 5G and uh, beyond uh, 5G communication features and all, why people are crazy, uh, this 5G and all. Right now, we are in a, at 4G and all. And uh, if we see that the uh, the speed, the data speed is maybe around 100 megabits per second. But uh, people are not happy with that. Uh, so uh, they, when they want to enjoy uh, services and features, uh, we have to increase the speed and all. Uh, then only they can enjoy. Because nowadays, uh, uh, many are uh, crazy with the online uh, applications and all. So uh, once it is uh, online, everything, and we have to provide a high speed data transmission. So that is the demands uh, in the order of gigahertz. So if you want to get the, uh, the order of uh, gigahertz data rate, uh, one has to go for uh, 5G and beyond uh, 5G only. So when you go for uh, 5G and beyond 5G, uh, we have to uh, construct the your antenna structures uh, uh, at the uh, mm range, millimeter range only. So maybe one mm to uh, 10 mm, uh, 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 wavelength spectrum. So your antenna should uh, uh, support uh, uh, those uh, uh, wavelengths. So when you are going for that, then your bandwidth, frequency bandwidth is uh, comes under in the order of gigahertz, maybe 300 gigahertz to, uh, sorry, 30 gigahertz to 300 uh, gigahertz. So 
when you are trying to design your antenna at, uh, in that range, terahertz range, or you know, when you are the, utilizing the uh, millimeter wave bandwidth, uh, millimeter uh, mm spectrum, then uh, we'll get a huge uh, bandwidth, plenty of bandwidth you can use. So when you have a, enough bandwidth, the speed is automatically is going to be improved. So the, you can get the capacity and the speed. Uh, at the same time, we have to be very careful uh, the uh, latency. And uh, nowadays, uh, the latency is uh, very, very low. We have, people are demanding latency. It should be in the order of one millisecond. Right now, the latency is uh, around 300 uh, milliseconds and all. But uh, we need uh, latency is uh, uh, one millisecond, means one by thousand second. Uh, try to amend that. Uh, imagine this, one second, thousand, one by thousand, uh, one by thousand seconds. So this application is uh, especially uh, going to be used or demanded in uh, uh, driverless cars. So in future, uh, uh, people are going to use the driverless cars. And when you are uh, using this driverless cars uh, mechanism uh, on the roads, uh, uh, the latency should be very, very low. Because if your car is a highly uh, equipped uh, advanced technology and your system should uh, take the decision in a fraction of a second, uh, less than one millisecond, uh, so that uh, the journey will be more comfortable and uh, easy. Uh, when you are going uh, at the speed, uh, you should predict what is coming in the opposite and where the turning and all these things, uh, uh, where the signals are coming and all. So when you are moving at a uh, high speed on the, uh, on the roads, uh, the latency is uh, plays a role. If the latency is very high and nobody can use the driverless cars. So we have to take the decision at a faster rate because both are coming uh, at a different speeds and all you have to estimate and you have to take the decision and you have to uh, take the driving left, right and forward or based on that uh, thing. So uh, this is a very essential thing. And uh, this uh, uh, 5G and beyond 5G is going to be used in uh, healthcare and robotics and industrial and home applications and all. And uh, so when you are going to use uh, in all these applications, we have to be very careful quality of the signal and bandwidth should be a uh, thousand times and the battery life should be uh, quite longer time because when you are going to use in uh, industrial and uh, robotic applications uh, and uh, I iot applications especially in iot uh, iot is generally is a low power uh, module and uh, you need to uh, recharge the battery uh, one has to uh, monitor the battery, whether the sufficient energy levels are there or not. So keep on, you have to charge it. But uh, it is not possible to uh, handle that way. So if you are concentrating, and when you are going to use the 5G and 6G, uh, and definitely uh, energy is directly uh, transmitted with the help of beam forming, and it takes very little amount of energy. So once it is a little amount of energy is uh, taking, and the battery life is going to be increased. There's no need to uh, charge frequently. So this is an advantage, and uh, coverage is also is uh, good. And you can uh, you can expect a hundred percent coverage. Uh, now we can see that uh, one place you will get the signal, and another place you can't get it because uh, is a uh, properly it is not covered. But when you go for five uh, G, this is also possible. The coverage area is going to be increased. So these are the uh, some futures uh, uh, we, we are going to get with the help of uh, uh, 5G and 6G uh, uh, technologies in future. Now, how to get it? So what are the approaches are there to achieve this? Uh, one is a classical method. Uh, other one is the evolutionary techniques and hybridization of uh, these techniques. So classical methods means they can get from the standard books and uh, with the help of that equation, and all you can do and evolutionary techniques. Uh, this only we are going to concentrate uh, mainly on this. Then hybridization of that only we are going to achieve. Now, uh, some list of uh, uh, heuristic and uh, uh, such algorithms you are going to see. And before we want to see this uh, list, uh, what do you mean by heuristic and uh, the search algorithms? In the beginning, I said uh, uh, we have only four operations selection, then uh, a fitness function, or cost function, or objective function. You have to find, and based on that, you have to estimate it whether they are good or not. And uh, based on that, you are going to take the decision. Then again, you are going to modify uh, their characteristics by the help of cross or mutation and all. Some operations you are going to do 
uh, arithmetic operations and all. Then you will know, get the new population. Then again, we are going to see whether is the uh, performance is good or not. Fitness is the help of the task function. And once it is good, you have to take. Otherwise, again, you are going to repeat it. So in this process, in the heuristic algorithm, uh, the solution candidates uh, keep on updating their values by iteration by iteration. That is the meaning of that. To get the optimal output. To obtain the desired output or optimal or best results to get the uh, optimal results within the frame time the solution candidates are themselves are going to update their weights uh, iteration by iteration that's all and hence it is called as a heuristic algorithm somehow now uh, you can see that uh, these algorithms uh, here i would like to address one point if you are going to observe the nature very closely and thoroughly, if you observe the nature closely and thoroughly, sim simply seeing is not uh, meaningless. Uh, you are seeing the bird, how it is uh, moving and going and all, uh, that is not it. Not the seeing, you have to observe and if you, you have to watch and the keen observation is required. When you are going to observe with the keen, uh, uh, keen watching and all, and uh, we can understand the subject very thoroughly. And you have to understand the nature very clearly. When you understand the nature, how it is behaves thoroughly, and we can get the n number of uh, solutions uh, for the uh, problems. And uh, uh, why I'm saying this means we can see that the list of these uh, uh, algorithms, uh, I'm going to read out a mapping algorithm, uh, mimetic algorithm, differential evolution, dynamic relaxation, genetic algorithm, random restart, and uh, uh, particle swarm optimization, spider, uh, uh, then uh, ABC algorithm, ant colony, monkey algorithm, um, uh, firefly algorithm, bat algorithm, then fish algorithm, butterfly algorithm, uh, wolf optimization, and uh, teacher learning based optimization, and uh, uh, biogeography based optimization, Taguchi method, evolution strategy, evolution programming, and uh, bloom worm uh, swarm optimization, bacterial uh, optimization, frogging uh, and fish algorithm, then genetic programming, simulated uh, annealing, uh, raindrop optimization, cuckoo search algorithm, etc., etc., etc. See, all these the algorithms are day to day life we are seeing. Monkeys, how we are moving, and uh, bat, how it is going on, how they are collecting food, how they are searching and all in the night times and all, and similarly, uh, raindrop, how it is raindrop, and, all, and cuckoo algorithm, how the uh, cuckoo is uh, uh, laying the eggs and all, and fish algorithm, how the fish is uh, fish pooling, or how the fish is moving and how to collect the food and all. You see, if you observe all these algorithms, uh, particle swarm, how the birds are going from one point, uh, bee algorithm, uh, if you go to the garden and uh, you see that how the uh, bees are go going to a particular point, direction, uh, why it is going, if you see that all these things, and if you observe the nature closely, that is what I'm saying, closely, uh, not simply observing also, closely, and uh, if you monitor uh, uh, inch by inch how it is moving at all, and uh, we can get uh, n number of solutions for our problems. So my conclusion for here for this table is, uh, you have to address to your students, you have to motivate to your students, observe the nature thoroughly. When you observe the nature thoroughly, they can uh, get the solution easily. Here, I'd like to address one point. Uh, normally, we, people used to say, uh, sir, I have a problem, I'm unable to get the solution and all. Uh, whether it is a research scholar or a BTEC student or MTech student or uh, any subject, they'll come and ask, sir, I have a doubt, uh, I'm unable to follow on all. But uh, immediately, uh, you are giving answer to the boy. Oh, okay, you don't know I am a uh, This is the formula, this is like this, this game. Uh, you, you, like that you are telling. But this is not the way to teach the student. If you teach like that, uh, directly or indirectly, you are stopped there, uh, skills you are stopped you should not give the answer when the boy is asked the doubt first why he has got the doubt the reason is he is not studied the 
subject thoroughly he has not absorbed the each and every step uh, uh, all the uh, how that uh, circuit is uh, behaving and all if the boy is analyzed each and every operation and definitely uh, he himself will get the answer for the problem so what i'm going to say here is you have to put a question uh, step by step why this why this why why and from that he will analyze and finally will get the answer instead of that what you are giving you are giving the complete answer but uh, giving answer is not good after four five times four five trials if you are putting and even then if he is not unable to answer then finally you have to give answer but first iteration itself don't give the answer to the boy you have to uh, identify his skills and uh, the boy should uh, recognize his skills as yes, i know that how to observe how to find how to get the solution that is the role of the teacher see most of the times uh, teacher is giving answers but it's not the correct way to do that uh, our job is to give the answer if he is unable to get the answer after four five iterations uh, without doing a uh, trying and all simply giving answer is not correct so if you observe the nature thoroughly and uh, uh, we will get the n number of uh, uh, solutions so here yeah, if you go through four five algorithm and you, you will uh, uh, laugh at that are uh, this is also there uh, daily i am seeing uh, in a childhood also i observed this now i am uh, using that concept in my problem like that uh, uh, thing will go you will uh, uh, surprise that so if you explain that and boy will find the new algorithm also there is no wonder in that so uh, ask the boy to study the problem thoroughly if, if you concentrate uh, the problem uh, are, that is uh, normally when you go for the uh, uh, some problem we will ask that uh, literature survey so if you analyze the literature survey thoroughly and if you understand the problem thoroughly and the, the understanding of the problem will give you solution for your problem i hope that you understand if you understand the problem thoroughly and that understanding of that problem will give you the solution and uh, once you got the solution means there is no problem so as long as you are going to say the problem is existing means you are not studied thoroughly the problem so you, you are not getting the answer if you analyze the subject inch by inch line by lines and point by point and if you understand the subject clearly and there is no question of problem existing because uh, actually there is no problem at all if we say the problem is solution should be there once solution is there means you are not studied the you are not analyzed the problem clearly so there is no question of problem is existing right now actually it's not, we are un, we are saying that it's a problem but you are not studied thoroughly hence you are saying that it is a problem if you studied the problem thoroughly if you studied the subject clearly and there is no problem at all even then if you are going to say problem and the solution is there in built only Uh, and the people are going to say that solution is there we are not finding the solution solution is there in the problem itself so uh, i hope that you understand this point and you address insist to the boy to analyze the problem clearly and the answer is there in the problem itself so don't think that we are finding the answers we are finding the solutions uh, your answer and solution is there in built in the uh, your uh, question itself so that we are finding uh, that's all so you you have to uh, force that uh, you try to increase the uh, how to identify the solution you know, from the problem so you try to uh, motivate the boy to think in that direction so now you, you have the uh, you observed the nature thoroughly you got the ideas and all when you got the idea sometimes why should i have to use ga why should i have to go for this method somebody has proposed why should i have to why can't do this way or i observed this this animal i observed this bird or i observed this insect so far they are not studied and this, this insect or this bird or this animal has a special feature and why can't you use this concepts in my algorithm yes you can use and when you are using then it is a novel and how can you say your is your technique is novel it is different from existing from the literature literature but before going to publish your algorithm it has to be accepted by the uh, professors or uh, editor or uh, uh, what do you call uh, reviewers uh, or experts in that domain area 
So they immediately they will ask, did you test your algorithm on test bench or benchmark functions? So when you observe the nature, you got the idea. From that idea, you are modified. Then you got the new algorithm, and that is a novel algorithm. You have given some name. See, your name is Krishna. Krishna algorithm. Fine. No, nothing wrong because you only invented, you only proposed. So you 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 would like to know what you want. Fine. Is a Krishna algorithm. When if you want to say that, you you have to prove that yourself. Your algorithm is somewhat better than the other. So the the person in this direction who are uh, already know this, they will ask uh, how much it is accuracy, how much time it will takes, uh, all these questions. Uh, what is your convergence of that? Uh, what is the error? Uh, all these questions they will put in front of you. At that time you should answer. No, no, sir. I I got the idea. This is my Krishna algorithm, and Krishna algorithm is you applied in the beam forming. I got the results. Means nobody will accept. So before going to that, you have to test on the test function. These are called as a benchmark function. Sometimes optimization test function. So you have to apply your algorithm on the benchmark functions, benchmark uh, uh, test functions. Why it is the benchmark test functions? Say here, so many are there. Many local minima, valley shaped, bowl shaped, paddle shaped, other shaped. So many functions are there. Just for I give some few, but if you go to the literature, n number of test functions. If you go to any mathematical textbook or any uh, literature survey or in a web, you will get plenty of that. After that, at least you have to take half a dozen, half a dozen minimum, six seven you have to take. If possible, at least twelve functions you have to pick up. And you apply your Krishna algorithm on this, and say that to find the roots for this function, I got one millisecond. They got it, one point one millisecond, uh, like that. Or uh, they got the error is this much, and you got error is this much. So if you tabulate it and if you compare, and uh, more or less you got it, or better. Sometimes more or less also is good. So close it to on par with their results, or you got a little bit better, or uh, maybe uh, they got one millisecond. You also got uh, uh, 0.99 millisecond. This is good. So uh, they got error is uh, uh, say one. You got it 1.1 or 0.9 error. So if when you are getting a uh, in and around that, and if it is closer to that, then people will appreciate. Uh, if we are getting less time, uh, then it is well and good. Even then, if it is getting fine. So you have to identify maybe time consumption or complexity or understanding or mathematical representation. So uh, uh, error function uh, like this certain parameters you have to take into account and uh, compare and say that uh, when I'm using these test functions, my algorithm is giving uh, more or less as a good results. Then they will appreciate the editor or a reader or a, a evaluator or examiner uh, a reviewer. Uh, some extra jack they will appreciate uh, and uh, they will give the acceptance uh, quickly for your paper so you have to motivate the, your student to uh, develop the new algorithm and ask them to test functions mm, so then uh, sir uh, when you are asking to do the new method then what is the need of to study the uh, literature and all you have to study in literature survey uh, because from the literature survey only you can understand where the gaps are in the uh, uh, in this uh, domain so those gaps you have to fill so uh, so that only acceptances will be more otherwise uh, you found something and already is existing they'll say oh it is there what is your contribution so they won't accept so you have to study the uh, uh, history uh, history in the sense you have to do the rigorously effectively uh, literature survey uh, right from beginning to till today and uh, that is the reason uh, the bright student and intelligent student, and uh, they will spend more time on the literature survey. So assume that uh, they will have to um, complete the uh, project work, uh, say some three years. Uh, one third of the time they will spend on the literature survey, or uh, sometimes more also. Uh, then uh, they'll get the solution uh, quickly. Uh, sometimes they'll complete before the uh, deadline. But uh, some students, uh, they won't uh, do the literature survey, they will go to the problem. If you take the UG students and uh, PG students and all, uh, sometimes some students, they will go directly to the problem. They'll attack, but uh, 
they will struggle a lot uh, compared to this fellow so this fellow will do systematically and you will understand and you will get the uh, solution easily and his journey will go in a smoothly uh, and that fellow he has to struggle and after doing uh, uh, four or five steps uh, again he has to go back to the literature survey that should not be the correct position so you have to spend more time on the literature survey and get the problem understand the problem and when you understand the problem and the problem himself uh, uh, will give you solution so like that you have to motivate the your students then still it is motivation so my idea is how to take the uh, class effectively that is the reason if simply if i go to lms or ga and da then it is not a great thing how to take the class effectively and you have to ask the your student to sit hours together they should not get bored if they have to get the interest from that he himself has to learn Hey, how many techniques you can uh, uh, address to boy? N number of uh, techniques are there, and which algorithm is going to be useful in, in the future? We don't know. Say G is only the answer, or Taguchi is the only answer, or uh, butterfly is the only answer. We don't know. According curriculum, we are going to uh, guide them. We are going to educate them. But in that process, you have to develop the boy. Uh, he has to learn by self. So to to learn the self, uh, interest has to be created, and uh, that interest the teacher has to do. Otherwise, uh, meaningless. So you have to take the lecture more effectively. Uh, the interest and uh, uh, importance, application, motivation, all these things if you have to take. And uh, uh, after four or five classes, before going to start the first unit, the boy will understand what I am going to expect or what I am going to learn from these units. That has to be that. When I'm going to take the signal system, uh, at least four or five classes I will take introduction itself, and my introduction will uh, address all the topics uh, briefly and significance, importance, application, everything, and where this convolution is going to be used, where this time delay will come, how to model the channel, everything, and what is the role of that. If we address the introduction thoroughly uh, before first chapter and the significance and importance, the boy will understand the importance of the subject. and you will study by himself that is the role of the teacher because now it is online in offline uh, before uh, pandemic a boy will come to the class physically and i i to i contact is there you, you know that boy is listening or not and you are going to scold if he is not following and all and something you can do uh, to improve his performance but now we don't know whether the boy is listening or not he will switch on and he will go to uh, bedroom and he will enjoy uh, and uh, Uh, at fine morning uh, his performance is uh, uh, not up, uh, up to the mark uh, that is uh, because of the teacher we should not blame the student he has the rights to go because you are bored and you are not excellent at that level hence he has uh, away from the uh, class so you have, you have to make them to sit uh, in the in front of the your system so uh, now uh, along with your student uh, their parents also listening so then sometimes the the parents will also understand how the teacher is addressing very nicely uh, and they will appreciate yes the teacher has taken very coolly and nicely with examples and all and they will uh, scold the boy uh, your teacher is explaining nicely and examples and all you concentrate like that they will also sit uh, even if they don't know the subject and terminology and all so now it is a uh, we, we have to change our presentation board uh, uh, you have to give more examples And you have to explain neatly and uh, easily, and uh, this is a somewhat different uh, way to address the problem to the students because we don't know whether they are following or not. So if we take the examples uh, more effectively, the boy will understand and they'll sit uh, continuously uh, in front of the system. Continuously in the sense means not morning to evening, uh, maybe one hour, two hours. That one hour also has to be sit. Uh, so we should not take continuously four hours. That is also not good. Anyhow. Uh, your uh, uh, management will take care. Uh, you know, at least uh, one hour break and all these things. That I am not going to address. So once your slot is there, one hour slot, the boy should uh, sit continuously one hour. He should not uh, escape. So for that, you have to take more effect today. Now you have to come to the topic. Now in the uh, in this twenty uh, first century, the modern wireless communication uh, uh, services are spreading rapidly uh, every day. If, if you Go for decades back and years uh, ago, 
and uh, we have the uh, communication and log communication uh, from point to point uh, via wired uh, wired wired communication at the time uh, only voice is going to be communicated we, we don't have the internet facilities and other features video facilities and all and later on uh, uh, pages came short messages where are you how are you so we have small uh, 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 one unit will be there a small typing is there and keyboard with that keyboard you can write only short where are you how are you and i'm coming are you coming like that uh, uh, happy birthday like that some short messages are you can uh, uh, send it and later in a, that is the uh, 1g level in a 2g then uh, digital communication came and a uh, little bit quality is also improved in a 3g then we have the internet facilities uh, uh, internet uh, service uh, provision then you can uh, transmit the signals uh, simultaneously and uh, uh, you can download the data at a faster rate uh, and the video conferencing and all these things are coming and now 4g you are enjoying now at present uh, this 4g also not go not sufficient and lot of demand is coming and many features are coming so when you are providing uh, many services to the customer and automatically a lot of demand coming into that uh, direction. So we have to provide good bandwidth, uh, high speed and good quality of signal. In the beginning, uh, we addressed uh, 5G features and all. So your signal quality is important, bandwidth is important, uh, channel capacity, all these things are uh, very, very important. So due to this, when you are providing all these features and all, and uh, 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 electromagnetic pollution also is going to be increases. So we can't uh, install the towers wherever you like. If you and simply we radiate the signals, and uh, this is another uh, problem. Uh, and if you radiate simply without uh, regulations, uh, then uh, this will create another problem. And you can't see the birds and uh, so many other. Uh, uh, the nature is going to be disturbed. So this is another pollution that is called as uh, electromagnetic pollution. Normally you have seen the uh, dust pollution, uh, water pollution, and other things and all. That is the reason the way this government is concentrating in the Swachh uh, Don't drop the uh, plastic and other things on the roadside and all these things. So that is a, one type of pollution to clear and uh, to make the nature is uh, beauty and, uh, and you have to enjoy with that and you have to get the fresh air and all. Similarly, here also, if you want to uh, control uh, this, uh, one has to concentrate in a uh, smart and uh, uh, to minimize this uh, pollution effect in the uh, electromagnetic direction. Then uh, we have to see that a smart and uh, uh, array uses evolutionary algorithm, which not only maximizes the signal power in the desired direction, but also places nulls in the undesired direction to minimize the interference effect on the system. So this is the smart antenna uh, array definition. So this smart antenna array uses evolutionary algorithms, which not only maximize the power in the desired. We are we are making entire energy in the particular direction. At the same time, we are going to place the nulls in the unwanted direction with the help of evolutionary algorithms. Then, to meet this, what are the techniques are there? One is uh, Taylor's method, uh, Fourier transform method, Woodward's Larson method, and dolph chelsea method, and et cetera, et cetera. So if you go to the, any standard test books, uh, uh, antennas by cross or Balonis or uh, uh, Iliad and all, so many test books are available uh, and uh, you will get it uh, uh, how to solve this uh, uh, beam forming uh, uh, structures and all. If you take the dog chip chip, you have some equation and from that if you simplify cost function and time functions, uh, it will give some uh, uh, values. And uh, if you feed that signal, uh, that values to the antenna structure, then we'll get the radiation pattern. But can I use the same thing into the real life uh, uh, practical domain? Yes, in the real life, yes, you can use, but uh, we can't use. The reason is, uh, when I'm using this concept in the cellular mobile communication, right now my user is at 30 degrees. After a, a few seconds, he's on roaming and he's going to another direction and he is uh, sometimes he's completely uh, out of the uh, service uh, uh, boundary and immediately has to uh, monitor it and has to connect it. I have to switch my beam uh, continuously. Uh, right now at 30, later is 60 degrees, and later is some other direction, or I have to uh, uh, hand out takes place, and I have to monitor continuously, and uh, I have to adjust the, my weights of the my array to get the desired pattern. So keep on changing uh, the user 
and once the user is changing uh, uh, my radiation pattern has to be modified accordingly it has to be done in a uh, dynamically so when you want to do dynamically i have to adjust the my weights in a rapid fashion so when you want to do the rapidly and my algorithms i have to do faster rate right? so when i'm going to use this uh, manually solving the equation getting that and uh, feeding that by the time user will uh, change their location so that should not be happen so i have to use this uh, concepts but somehow i have to get the quickly so here i am going to use the uh, some feedback mechanism with the help of the optimization techniques evolutionary techniques uh, we are going to achieve that we are going to see that so if you go to uh, skalnoff method uh, uh, they are going to draw the unit circle and uh, uh, with the help of the poles and zeros and uh, we'll get the main beam and nulls uh, side lobes and all these things so if you refer to any standard textbook Uh, they'll say Skarnoff method, draw the inner circle, and I want the main beam. Then find the roots, and with that you can do. But uh, when you go for practical day, uh, it, it is uh, time taking, and you can't do uh, at a faster rate. So to avoid that, we are going for the these techniques. Then, so what are the uh, traditional or classical methods out there? Typus method, uh, Newton's method, uh, and gradient method, and all. and the modification of a steepest uh, descent and uh, newton's method is the lms algorithm uh, least mean square L lms uh, lms algorithm it is a iterative technique uh, to find the optimal point i have one function i want to get the what is optimal point so with the help of uh, uh, this uh, iterative technique i, I can get the uh, solution so uh, now Uh, what do you mean by LMS? Why you are going for the LMS? Uh, why am I going for LMS? Is it is a simple, uh, easy. You can uh, implement quickly. And uh, the problem is here is sometimes it will uh, stuck at uh, um, local minimums. Uh, so it is uh, that is a drawback. And another thing is uh, converges uh, slowly. So these are the only limitations. Otherwise, this is very simple and you uh, uh, you can implement easily. You know, we are going to see. Uh, some other uh, better uh, uh, techniques uh, to overcome these uh, problems. Now, this is the uh, beamforming uh, 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 to get the idea. What is the block diagram? So you can see that if this is the array in it, and these are the uh, weights. And uh, my output is uh, not directly connected to the output, uh, the uh, the captured signal by the your antennas, uh, not directly connected to the output via uh, uh, these weights. so these weights i'm going to control so i'm going to monitor my output y of t i'm going to see that whether it is good or not uh, if i'm not happy and with the help of uh, uh, these weights uh, i'm going to modify and i will get the desired signal so finally we will get the desired response like this so here uh, i have one feedback mechanism uh, with the help of uh, sophisticated signal processing technique is going to be used with that uh, we can achieve that so now uh, applications of beamforming uh, the beamforming can be used in radar sonar communication imaging geophysical exploration astrophysical uh, exploration and uh, biomedical and so on so uh, you can see in the communication it can be used in the directional transmission of, uh, and reception purpose sector broadcast and satellite communication and so on then in the radar phased radar phased array radar and air traffic control uh, it is going to be so in air traffic control beam forming is also is used and not only that uh, in uh, oil exploration uh, where the oil uh, resources are existing and uh, to study the earth crust mapping and all uh, beam forming concepts are going to be used and these are the some uh, uh, applications where beam forming is going to be used then introduction uh so far you have seen the only motivation so uh, normally i used to take four five classes but it is not possible so uh, i have covered introduction as much as possible quickly by this time now we will go for the introduction worry of the and parameters control parameters to shape the overall pattern to get the desired pattern we are going to control the uh, parameters how we are going to do all these things we have seen then uh, a null placement and beam forming we are going to synthesize the pattern the next one is a spot and basic concepts and the algorithm so one by one you can see 
a fundamental parameters of the anna. Uh, this will take another uh, big uh, uh, lecture, so I'm not going to touch uh, based on this uh, direction. So just I'm going to list out anna parameters, field regions, radiation, power density, directivity gain, efficiency, upper limit, uh, polarization, like this. Uh, you have side loss and uh, omnilation pattern. Uh, these, these are the uh, frequently we are going to see these uh, uh, terms in the uh, antenna field. One has to know a uh, good commander in this. Uh, then a uh, typical radiation pattern, we can see this is the main beam and their energies are going to focus in this ba band and uh, these are the side lobes and uh, certain applications we don't want these side lobes. We are, we are trying to minimize or uh, we are going to suppress uh, the side lobes and sometimes uh, not only the suppressing the side lobes, we want to place the nulls mostly in particular direction, say at, a six, at a 70 degrees. Uh, now we right now have the uh, beam, first side, side lobe. Uh, at 70 degrees. I don't want the 70. Then I want to place a null. So if when I place a null, even if the signal is coming, it won't affect it. So my signal to noise is going to be improved. And this is the power pattern. This is the field pattern. And you can see this is the back lobe. And this is the ma main lobe. And these are the side lobes. And this is in the uh, partition coordinates. This x y power plot. This is the polar plots. Then in a single antenna, uh, relatively wide uh, radiation pattern and low directivity. But when you want to transmit uh, uh, for a long distance communication, so you mean you mean to transmit the signal for a long distance communication, uh, obviously the gain is required, more gain is required. So for example, when I want to deliver a lecture to the, my student, to the first bench, assume that first bench here, uh, is sitting. Then I'm going to speak in a, in a little volume, uh, less energy level, because since he's very close to me, then I know, and assume that the boy is sitting at the last, then I have to increase my volume and my energy level a little bit. I have to shout this so that you will get the uh, signal. So I have to more gain. I have to raise my gain so that he will uh, understand. Similarly, also, also to transmit the long distance, uh, I have to increase the, my gain. So that is answer. But how to get the uh, gain, more gain? So you have to increase the size. So when you increase the antenna size, increasing the electrical size, then we'll get the more gain. So when you speak out a low volume, you can't get the energy. So you have to shout, then energy will be more. Similarly, here, I have to increase my size. So simply increasing the size, nobody's going to prefer. That is the reason we are going for the fractals and all. So when you use the fractal geometry, so when I use the, what you call the hatch antenna, uh, each side is one centimeter. Then your circumference is four cm. And if we apply the fractal, and if you use the, one of the fractal uh, geometry, uh, some uh, uh, geometry, then your circumference is going to be increases tremendously. So your electrical length is going to be increases. So it occupies the same same area. Sometimes it's less also. It occupies less copper. And so these are the uh, features. So one has to concentrate uh, how to increase that uh, electrical size uh, with the same size and all. So simply increasing uh, size is not the uh, solution. So you have to find. So another answer is here. Uh, so you have to enlarge the uh, your uh, physical antenna size, but uh, it is not at all advisable. Certain applications, certain applications we are going, but certain applications. Say for example, your cell phone is there. I want a, um, a big size antenna. If you place it, then uh, your uh, uh, front panel and everything has to be modified, and nobody is going to like it because they want to handy and they want to handle in the pocket. But when you are going to use that, then it is not advisable. So within the uh, size, you have to design the antenna. So uh, the uh, engineer will say, uh, we are in this uh, uh, front panel, we are provided this much area. There only you have to uh, design your antenna to capture the signal and all. So you have to be very careful. So you have to go for a patch antenna and fractal antennas and to design the suitable antennas for uh, your problem and uh, according that. Then control parameters. What are the control parameters are there to get the desired pattern? So the, for understanding, I give, give a linear array. Need not be always linear array, just for idea. So I have an elements. So it is geometry. It may be a linear or a circular or a, a triangular or any shape. Uh, so if you refer the standard book, they'll tell linear, circular, like that, they'll tell. But uh, you can have a different geometry and 
uh, how the geometry is going to influence the your pattern. So one has to study. So uh, and the geometry. Uh, so you have to see that based on the system, uh, you have to place the antenna. Then distance between the elements, inter inter uh, element spacing. There is 0.5 uh, in terms of lambda, or 0.25, or uh, less than, or greater than. So how to adjust? Uh, 0.25 lambda, or 0.5 lambda, or 0.75 lambda, or one lambda. Uh, what is that? Where for to get the desired pattern, uh, can I go for uniform uh, or non-uniform spacing? Uh, so uniform is 0.5, 0.5, 0.5. Non-uniform is uh, uh, between one and two, 0.5. Again, two and three. 0.75, then again 0.25, like that. So it varies. So how to get it? So to get it down uh, uniform, then you have to go for trial and error method. So I'll do that. So if you want to do that, how many combinations will come? Can I get the answer? When you are going to uh, feed the signal, uh, uh, inter element spacing is non uniform. Uh, to get the desired pattern, uh, how much time will take, or how many patterns will get it, how many combinations will get it? Can you able to follow? Anyone can answer? Are you following? Is the feedback is there? Hello. Yes. Anyone can share that Prasar question in the chat box. Answer solution for that. How many patterns can I get it? When I'm trying to feed the signal. Non-uniform pattern, how many patterns can I get it? Okay, now I'm giving answer. So follow me. So we have infinite combinations, infinite, because assume that uh, zero to n, then 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, one combination, 0 0.25, 0 0.25, one combination, 0 0.75, like that. Again, all the combinations like that. If you go for that infinite combinations, among them, we have the answer. Then to pick up that. I have to do all infinite and is a time taking is a time consuming and after four or five iterations we will be fed up and you lose the concentration you lose the interest and why should I have to do like that so many things will come so once you lost the interest you can't proceed so when you are doing the same operation uh, every day and after four or five iterations you will be fed up with a uh, routine work so but your answer is not there so it is not required so when you go for trial and error method, you have to do all that. Even if you got the answer, you, you as a you, you, human being, you are not going to happy. Maybe next iteration may be good. Next iteration may be good. Like that you are going. So even if you got the better result, you, you, you are not happy until the last iteration to be completed. So here, so many iterations like that in the D in similarly current or voltage uh, is the amplitude uh, modification and similarly phase modifications. Then element pattern. I can use the patch and no, or a horn and no, or combination of that or helical and no, whatever with that. So uh, different elements patterns can I use. So when I'm going to handle all these things, uh, I can get the desired pattern. I can go for geometry or I can modify D or I or a phase or element pattern. So when I'm going to control this, I can get the desired pattern. So all these things I have to do trial and error method. So trial and method is taking time consuming. And uh, after four or five iterations, uh, we'll fed up and we'll stop the activity. So what you are going to do trial and method, the same thing I'm going to do with the, my algorithm. So with the help of the algorithm, uh, I will get the results. That is the reason we are going for the optimization technique. Next, in that optimization technique, uh, these are the three blocks, a system modulation, adaptive beamforming algorithm, and DOA estimation. So these are the three important building blocks in the uh, smart end now. Uh, system models should be there, adaptive beamforming algorithms, and DYA estimation. So your smart end now, system consisting of number of elements, uh, maybe 10, 5, 6, 6, 7, like that, based on the application, a uh, group of uh, elements are there in a different fashion, either linear or circular, some geometry, and uh, whose signals are processed adaptively, and uh, signals are going to be adapted to exploit uh, spatial uh, uh, dimensions of the dynamic mobile radio channel. The reason is uh, my radio channel is a continuously changing. It's a dynamic nature. Say morning, one temperature, and after one hour, another temperature, and morning uh, pollution is different. Uh, afternoon is different. Evening is different. If you go to the Anbukan Chaurasta, 
uh, their uh, uh, channel is completely dynamic. Uh, tropic is uh, dynamic and uh, temperature is uh, also uh, drastically changes. So the climate, everything is changes. All these things will influence your channel. So your channel is highly dynamic and once the channel is highly dynamic and correspondingly you have to uh, adapt your weights. This is the reason we are going for beam forming. So now well, linear array you are going to consider the total uh, array output is given as uh, y of t is equal to uh, w into x of t. So you can see that in the previous diagram, block diagram, uh, quickly back. Uh, see, my output y of t is equal to incoming signal into weights. The same thing I have talked about here. So output y of t is equal to uh, output of the system y of t is equal to incoming signal, captured signal by your antenna array and uh, weights because your signal is uh, uh, multiplied by these weights to get the desired output. So to get the desired output y of t, I'm going to handle uh, w of h, w power. So it's a complex conjugate. So I have to handle this. So now uh, the LMS algorithm is used in the signal systems. If you go to uh, signal system, there people are going to use, uh, and not only that, in the filter problem, uh, uh, low pass filter, high pass filter, or any filter, and smoothening, and uh, prediction, so you can use that. So another one is system identification. You, you can uh, identify the unknown plant, and the equalization. In a communication, uh, LMS algorithm is used, uh, and you can get the equalizer and according to the base. Uh, channel uh, castings uh, so that you can uh, get the better signal and uh, prediction you, you can find out the, what is the nest value based on the random of the signal and echo cancellation uh, uh, using LMS we can uh, cancel the uh, undesired signal so that uh, uh, signal to noise ratio is going to be improved and uh, FIR filter design and uh, tap delay uh, line uh, weighted tap delay line uh, so you you can when you are trying to model the channel, I got the signal and first check, uh, signal is direct signal, another signal is uh, multipath and it may be uh, affected phase or magnitude and again is collected. So when you are trying to model, uh, there is nice, nothing but FIR filter and that FIR filter coefficients can be computed with the help of LMS uh, with the optimally and quickly. So uh, we can say that LMS can be used in uh, different uh, areas. So not only in uh, antenna, it can be used in uh, different areas. So now, how to develop this LMS algorithm? How to understand? So from this uh, title, LMS, least mean square. What do you mean that least means? I'm going to get error should be least or my cost function value should be minimum. That is why it is called least. I want to minimize the my cost function. I want to minimize the my, uh, what you call the error function should be minimum. So hence it is called the least. A uh, mean square. Uh, to get the error, I'm going to take the difference and that difference is going to be squared. And while doing, I'm going to take the mean of that. Hence it is called as a least mean square. So I'm trying to find the cost function, the error function, and the error function uh, value should be least. Before going to find the least, uh, I'm going to take the squaring of that. So uh, I am trying to find the mean of uh, the square of the uh, that function. Hence, it is called as a least mean square algorithm. How to develop this uh, algorithm uh, steps? So before going to next slide, this is the steps involved in the LMS algorithm. Before that, uh, we are going to see the number gaming. Uh, you recollect your childhood, uh, uh, go back to your childhood as and recollect uh, uh, some games. Most of them are uh, uh, played uh, during their childhood time, this number gaming. So I briefly will explain uh, to understand this LMS algorithm. Say, assume that uh, one boy has uh, picked the coin from the box and hold at that, he knows that uh, very well what was the number because he only picked it and he has the rights to see that. He has seen. And assume that right now I'm uh, giving the answer, assume that he has a 10. But actually, uh, the 
those who are uh, involved in the game they don't know so he knows that and he hold it and what is this number he asked the other boy the fellow said uh, 20 answer is actually 10 he said 20 no another boy 30 no another boy like that is going on so how many iterations will take is infinite infinite iterations 1 2 10 like that in that infinite iteration it may be first iteration game may be over the answer is 10 in the first iteration he said 10 over game is over if, if it is first iteration failed second second failed third like that will go in between the first to last in between also game will be over or otherwise at the last iteration so we don't know when the game is going to be over and uh, what is the boundary also we don't know so the numbers may be infinite we have zero to infinite so when you have the infinite number then the ga game is infinite isn't that you have hold it infinite and the boy is playing only 0 to 100 then he never touches the value so game is going on but no use then he has revealed the some constraints then my uh, numbers are starts with 1 to 100 now the maximum iterations are 100 uh, minimum is 1 so between 1 to 100 the game will be over so he has hold it 10 he started 1 then again to 3 4 5 like that is going on step by step and at 10th iteration the answer is over then he has going randomly one is wrong then 20 is negative then he is one direction even error is positive same means that uh, he hold it 10 he said one then you are downward side then immediately you will go to uh, 90 you are upward side then uh, boy will come to between 1 to 90 then he has uh, upward then you will go to uh, uh, maybe 5 uh, then you are downward so you he understand 5 to 90 then next time he said 20 then still you are up uh, then slowly is coming between 5 and 10 so after few iterations the game will be over then this is good but assume that he has the rights step size is only one but assume that his number is 20.5 he hold it the number is 20.5 and he can have a step size of uh, integers 1 2 10 like that so he said one the error is uh, he hold it 20.5 now error is uh, 18 point uh, sorry uh, 20.5 minus 1 so 19.5 then he said downward he has gone to upward so 25 then you are upward but error is uh, uh, positive then again is coming downward so like that is going on and finally you will come to uh, 19 then you said uh, negative error so you will go to 21 uh, answer is positive error then he never come to the 20.5 because he has a step size of 1 or 2 3 like that so he may stuck at uh, this uh, problem so they, you have to handle properly how to uh, do the step size and all if the step size is very very small if the step size is very very small and convergence is good the error will be less and takes more time uh, but you will get a better result but if the step size is large convergence uh, converges fastly but error will be more so you should be trade off between at this step size and convergence and error and all these things if you end in the problem clearly and you will get the answer so what you are doing from this game what you understand you said 10 initial says so him that he, he has hold it 20 you said 10 then he said you are in the downward immediately he is going to 30 then again he has added step size and coming down down so present plus step size with some value multiplied and added to the present value then again he is going to say uh, no again like that is going on so finally he is going to meet the answer so same steps are involved here also look at here present value he said 10 then step size maybe 2 or 1 or 5 order maybe that then input signal and the difference 
whether you are the negative or the positive based on that he is changing and with the help of this you got say some 2 so plus 10 plus 2 12 you will say 12 and again you will say uh, you are downward so again subsize again error so like that every time if the present value is added with the step size and error signal difference and that is going to be added with the present value then you will get the next value so in a number game how the uh, kids are playing in the school the same thing is going to be happen that is why i said in the beginning if you observe the nature and from that we can get the wonders in the lms also same thing more or less what i'm going to say is you observe the nature you will get the beautiful solutions so like that if we explain to your student then you will appreciate simply uh, next value is equal to present value plus step value input signal and different signal then again this is not then it, that is there in the textbook but see as a teacher you should find the uh, relevant examples how much it is possible but maximum you have to try uh, if, if it is possible exactly okay otherwise some extent it has to be correlated and try to bring to that attention so why will little bit concentration we take the lecture continuously uh, subject for a transform or antenna or a, what are the satellite communication or coding technique what are the subject you are going to teach signal system continuously one, one hour if i teach and after 10 minutes we lose the interest that is the psychology every 10 minutes uh, automatically the boy will lose the concentration but government says that you take the one hour class your uh, administrator has to take the one hour class and you are taking one hour fine you are uh, delivering the lecture uh, uh, subject wise the content it is not correct so as a teacher you have to hold his interest why should you uh, understand the subject so to get the understand his brain should not go to sleep mode he is in physically is there he is looking at you but the brain will think somewhere else what the others are doing or something something you will think uh, whether i have to go to movie or uh, after this class what i have to do something is thinking why is thinking basically he wants to he wants to understand the class that is the reason he came otherwise he won't come he came is he want to he wants to understand but after 10 minutes because of your lecture he has gone to another domain so again he is thinking so you have to bring from that domain to here so that is possible if you give the beautifully one examples and uh, uh, he will understand and he will follow at the same time you have to explain the concept also don't give the examples too much uh, relevant example and correlated and smoothly it has to be subject should be blended uh, then boy will appreciate and he will like you and he will consider as a you are a role model you have to be careful you have to take the lecture like that then see people will say uh microwaves are very tough but uh, my teachers uh, my guide uh, professor anvil sarma he used to take the antenna people will listen like anything yeah, such a way he has going to handle the reason how to handle the class is very important everyone knows the answer but simply knowing no answer and delivering is not a great thing uh, that, that is there in the textbook but how to handle the class is that is the role even if it is online or offline order me that Uh, it cannot be replaced by the teacher teacher has to take the guru has to be plays a role to uh, explain beautifully to them to understand and another thing is he has to catch the concept with less time he, he sh- the boy should not uh, struggle so that is possible when you are going to explain and if you give the more examples and all these things the boy will appreciate so now you see this is very simple present value step value and all the one, this is the error signal uh, you said uh, 10 and uh, actual value is 20 is a minus so this minus i got it uh, and it is multiplied by step function and you got some 2 or 3 and added a next value again you said no like that is goes so once the error is zero look at here when the error is zero then uh, the entire thing is zero and your present value is the next value so algorithm will be stopped and you got the results so you, this is the uh, whenever the error is zero and you are saying yes you got the answer similarly here also so if you have to explain this uh, some of it is not, not uh, that those game rules and this uh, uh, formula exactly mapped it is not possible so some extent you have to explain uh, and you tell that something is like that so boy will understand so hope that you got the point
now so now you can see that parameters to be considered what are the parameters to be considered in the algorithm the first one is convergence means you have to be very careful uh, in the convergence means uh, whether it is stable or not you, you have developed the algorithm lms algorithm based on the above equation you got it whether it is stable or not whether you got a desired value desired value means say you want to get 5 whether you got 5 or 4.5 or 4.9 like that is it stable uh, very got closely answer uh, whether it is converted to desired value and uh, whether it is stable uh, like that so that it means the convergence cast function so how do you know that is converged i have to define based on the problem you have to define the error function so you, you, you got the output from the system y and you have the desired signal d what do you want you know and what, what is coming from the system you know and try to compare both and find out the error and uh, you try to minimize the error uh, so like for example you, you want to uh, uh, pick up the uh, student for, for to complete the task or a project or a cricket team or something something some event so how you are going to do uh, you have certain parameters fitness function and all this uh, whether is going to bowl continuously whether is uh, uh, going to play one hour whether stamina is there whether the fielding is there or not so you are going to see the cast function you are going to define the cast function in that cast function is uh, fitting or not if it is not fitting then you are observed or oh, these are the gaps are there so you have to give the training and you have to modify its character so you have to define your cast function and see to that your cast function should be minimized by iteration by iteration like that you have to design then rate of convergence you already discussed convergence how close it is going to desired value and to get the desired value you are minimizing the cast function and rate of convergence you minimize the cast function you converge it but how fast that is very important say i got the convergence i got the i minimized the error but uh, uh, after uh, two days who wants you gave the problem to the student and the boy has to complete within a uh, exam period he got the answer after the exam you are not doing, you are not going to award the box you gave, you asked the one question and uh, the uh, bright student completed in time he got the marks and the slow learner he knows that how to do but he has taken uh, after 2 hour he has completed after 2 hours are you giving marks so he has converted but he is is our is uh, completed task after the uh, exam time so he award this zero marks so how fast it is converged within the frame time the task should be completed it should be converged and should be minimized the error and it has to be converged quickly this is the meaning so rate of convergence how fast it is converged this, this is one important thing the other one is miss adjustment I, here i forgot to write so miss adjustment is there any miss adjustment you have to fine tune that and uh, computational requirement computational requirement means uh, number of operations what is the memory location uh, how many additions are there how many multiplications are there how to do how to minimize that uh, the burden on the programming should be minimized so you have to take care of this so computational computational requirement number of operations and memory size and all, all these things and uh, apart from that one more important thing is robustness this is very important thing you are designed it has to be work say i i, I uh, manufactured the pen and it is very nice the cost effective is a good and fine but your pen will write on only on the smooth paper if you write the on the smooth paper your pen will write nicely and it will give nicely good thickness and all these things and all when i'm going to use the same pen on the rough surface it's gone your tip is damaged so you have to be very careful uh, your system should be ruggedness and even if it is uh, your channel is highly noisy uh, it has to be worked so uh, whether they are going to consider into a noise into account or not while designing the your system so uh, sometimes your environment is noisy uh, don't think that uh, your channel is always uh, uh, noise free uh, and also it is highly dynamic uh, sometimes noise is very less uh, sometimes very high uh, abnormal it is highly changes and is a day to day time to day and uh, it depends on the climate also your noise is also changes as a during the pandemic uh, the what you call uh, uh, pollution is gone to zero almost uh, there is no dust and all 
uh, you got fresh air. Whether you observe, I don't know. Uh, especially in Hyderabad, people are enjoying it like, like anything because there's no no uh, dust, no carbon dioxide, no vehicle po pollution and all, and they enjoy it like uh, how uh, in the villages people are getting uh, fresh air. And similarly, they got it even in every, every place because carbon dioxide levels have gone like anything. Uh, so uh, it changes uh, uh, time to time, place to place, and uh, all these things. Even under under the environment, uh, whether the, your system is uh, uh, goodness, so you have to take into account whether the your uh, system is able to um, operate satisfactorily under noise levels. So while designing your LMS algorithm, uh, all these parameters has to be considered into account. Then only you will get a better system. And what you have discussed there, all these things are applicable in any algorithm. Don't think that this is for your only LMS. And terminals are different. That's all. Keep in your mind. Uh, I'm going slowly, but I'm mitigating. I'm addressing slowly. And you have to catch one at least one point. And that is enough for me. Uh, yes, you have learned something today uh, during these two hours. Now, so my algorithm, LMS algorithm, output is equal to this one. Then error for formation. This is my cost function. Just as I said in the previous slide, you have to take the cost function. So this is my cost function. Uh, difference between these two. This is my desired signal, and y of n is my output signal. Uh, so I'm trying to map, and uh, my error should be zero. So I'm going to concentrate it. Uh, now my weight updation. So present weight plus mu into incoming signal and your error signal. So it is keep on updating iteration by iteration and uh, add it to present value to the next. So my updation, next value, W of n plus one is equal to present value plus step size into your error signal. You got it. Then it is updated. And this updated weight already I have shown in the beginning uh, feedback network, uh, the weights are going to be adjusted. So with that, we'll get the desired signal. Now, uh, this is one thing. And we already we discussed you know, what is the significance of the step size. If the step size is uh, uh, very large, say, uh, I have, say for example, uh, 0 to 2, my step size is 2. Uh, then uh, my range is 0 to 10. Then with the five, five iterations, it'll go over. Try to follow me. 0 to 10 is the range. 0 to 10 is range. Uh, then I have to find the where is my minimum or maximum or autumn is the function. My step size is 2, 0, next step 2, next step 4, like that. So finally, after six iterations, uh, your game is over. Uh, I quickly got it. So you got the six iterations. And you are observed the six outputs among them, uh, maybe third iteration, you got the result, and that is your output. But what about the error? Maybe more. And to minimize the error, less. You converge it, uh, but error will be more. You converge it fast, but I'm not happy. I want error should be less. So then what I have to do? Instead of uh, two, I gone for one. When I gone for one, uh, then uh, uh, maybe 11 iterations are taking. Uh, when I'm 11, error will be less, but uh, it, uh, 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 speed is uh, reduced and takes more time. Then still I won't improve. Then I'm going for 0.5. Then error will be less, but still. So you should know that is the convergence, convergence rate, and error function. Uh, all these three parameters is trade-off. So whether you want uh, less time, whether you want to uh, converge quickly, or you want a minimum error, or in between. So you have to find optimally. So both I want quickly at its converge uh, and uh, error should be less. So if you want it in that fashion, then you have to find the trade off and uh, you find out the uh, suitable uh, steps and step function. And, uh, this is, that is uh, one has to study in, uh, properly uh, in this direction, then you came to know that. So you have to be very careful. So what we discussed here, cost function, rate of convergence, convergence and all. So that is the place here, all. And uh, uh, computation load also depends on the that memory location and all. Now, the normalized LMS. And sometimes uh, if you are not, this uh, mu is independent on your, uh, your input signal uh, function. But uh, that is not good. You have to take uh, the mu should be function of this because uh, your mu is uh, greater than zero and less than one by lambda max where lambda max is the, uh, what do you call, uh, eigenvalue of your autocorrelation uh, function of x of n. 
So you know the uh, your uh, signal uh, characteristics, and you find out the uh, eigen function. And now my mu n is function of uh, your eigen value. So when you, it is considered that, and fine tuning can be possible, and you can get the better trade off between uh, above parameters. So in that process, it is alpha by gamma plus something. So why I'm using gamma means if I'm not going to use this gamma, sometimes this denominator uh, without this gamma function, uh, sometimes this denominator x of n correlation function uh, maybe it tends to zero also. So once it is tends to zero, your mu of n becomes infinite. Uh, that should not be happen. So to overcome that, uh, uh, I have to add small uh, uh, positive value. So when I'm using small positive rounds, this mu of n never tends to be infinite. So in this way, uh, this is going to be uh, normalized. So once it is normalized, you can, uh, because my signal is going to be compressed and my signal range is uh, also dynamic and it is uh, vast and uh, I can compress and I can handle properly. So using its normalization, we can get the uh, quickly uh, response. It can be converted quickly with the uh, acceptable uh, minimum error. Then this is one example uh, in a, uh, a radiation pattern of a linear area of uh, 21 elements and uh, 51. So the black curve indicates 21 ele elements response and red curve uh, radiation pattern indicates for uh, 51 elements. So now we can see that the desired signal is uh, at 60 degrees. At 60 degrees, desired signal is at 60 and undesired signal direction is at minus 30. So at minus 30 is undesired. So you can observe exactly at minus 30, a deep null is going to be placed. And uh, uh, main beam is shielded uh, uh, or uh, focused or concentrated at 60 degrees. So entire energy is at 60 degrees and a very little amount of energy is spreaded in the side lobes. And all side lobes are uh, less than minus 13 dB. So it's good, we got it. Next, similarly you can uh, refer the different case studies and normalize, the previous one is a uh, LMS. Uh, this is a standard one and this is a normalized case LMS and you can see the uh, both and uh, deep NASA can be obtained uh, then. This is the convergence plot. Uh, just now we have discussed what you mean by convergence and all. And uh, uh, with the help of the previous two slides, uh, this and this, uh, you can't understand how much convergence is takes place and uh, what is the error performance and all these things. So whenever if you go for the, uh, uh, to present uh, nicely, and if you want to address the problems to the student, uh, we have to explain uh, clearly uh, this uh, convergence plot. Uh, even when you are writing papers also, you have to explain this graph. You see that uh, LMS algorithm is taking more time and uh, normalized LMS is taking less time. And here, uh, around uh, 10 iterations it is converged and whereas this fellow is converged at uh, around uh, 50 iterations. And you may get doubt, so at uh, around 20 also it is converged. But uh, uh, this fellow is taking 10 only, this fellow is taking at uh, 20. But even if it is a 20, we should not consider. Well, and you may ask, sir, anyway, 20, it is converged. Uh, can you stop the algorithm? No, we should not stop. Because we don't know whether this is uh, uh, stable or not. In the beginning, I said the convergence uh, should be uh, stable. It has to be stable. And uh, whether the converged to desired value, uh, is it stable or not? Uh, now, if you explain like this, why will we cannot understand? Sir, you said convergence is stable or not and all. And, uh, and one way you said uh, it is converged, you got the results at 10 uh, or around the 20, whether it's both the cases. After 20, it is converged. Then why can't you stop? And you simply are running 100. Is energy waste, uh, memory locations, and everything is wasted. Uh, you got the 20 iterations, why can't you stop? Like that, why will ask it? But uh, you have to answer. As a teacher, you have to answer. Uh, you have, this is the way. Uh, you have to explain the uh, significance of uh, this graph. Uh, here, uh, how can you say is the stable and all these things? Uh, then how to understand the stableness? Uh, now, I will give you one example. Uh, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, you, you, have, you have some task and you need some uh, students to do that job. 
uh, okay fine then what you are going to do how you are going to do that uh, you are going to conduct the test you are given some uh, uh, questions 10 questions and they answered all 10 students answered 10 questions correctly then first boy is correct second boy like that all 10 students completed accurately correctly all are got good marks then which student you are going to pick up anyone but you should not do from that analysis and from that step if you are going to pick up one student means then your selection is wrong maybe sometimes correct but always it is not the correct way to pick up the student from first iteration then what you are going to do you are going to conduct one more test then definitely you are going to change the level of uh, question paper uh, some tough easy tricky questions and all these things and in this uh, few of them got less marks few of them are average and very few are got good marks then you are taking average then again third test all are got good marks then fourth so when you are connecting several tests and if you take the average and you can come to know that and four or five students not at all the good they are below average and very four or five students uh, maybe two three students are good and only two three students are excellent out of ten two three are uh, performed well and two three are average and four or five are below average but in the first step all are gone through that and first step all got 10 marks and from that test if you pick up one student and we don't know whether that boy is going to solve the problem or not i'm taking in the uh, technical point of view so if we conduct the four or five tests we can come to know that as yes, this boy is stable he can answer he can do a, at any type of problem come similarly you want to select the team member for the cricket for your uh, uh, institution uh, maybe on tournaments and you want to send the uh, from your institution uh, team members uh, cricket team members to another uh, university uh, to participate and your, your principal has given the task to you to pick up the uh, 15 students and you made an announcement uh, i need 15 um, cricket players uh, those who are interested you give me name then people are gave some 100 from the 100 randomly you are going to pick up if you pick up randomly then you are not the best selector then what you have to do you have to conduct the test and you are connected you are made it a groups uh, level 11 members of the team some uh, 10 teams came and uh, among them you connected and uh, you got the team and first iteration you should not do that first iteration is that we came to know that this team is good this team is good or this team, and remaining you can you can't truncate it because in that uh, in one team, bowler may be good. In another team, bowler fielder may be good. Another team, uh, like that is there. You have to identify all the best students in a different teams and pick up and give the training. And you have to then uh, their stableness is good. Are you got the point? You have to run the n number of tests, and you will get the best. So if it is performed continuously, all the tests. Or more or less is good above the threshold level, then is the, he has a stable. So that is the meaning I would like to say. So here also, uh, I have to run the algorithm even if it is converged, whether it is uh, stable or not. See here it is stable, and my red color is almost stable. But whereas black color at 20 it is converged, and again at 45, uh, around at 35 it is came out. Again at the 30, 45 it is came out. So it is not converged. So there is a problem. So you have to be very careful whether it's converted or not, and you have to test it. And similarly, you can see that this fellow is giving a nice performance, and this is highly random. So initial selection also is very important. So you should know how to select the population uh, and how to train them, how to uh, conduct the test, how to improve. So when you are selecting the candidates from the poll randomly, and you are going to pick up in the team A, this player is good and team b these two are good in a team c these four are good team d these two are good and you are taking but according your taste they are not the up to the mark then you are giving training do this way that way that way then with the inputs they are going to excel then they, they are the solution for your problem so if you observe the process thoroughly and you will get the solution easily from the process so in the beginning i said 
if you know the process clearly don't think that we are going to find the methods all these things are there in the day to day life in day to day life these are there what i had given example to select the team, cricket team uh, at this am technique i am going to use in my algorithm in one of the algorithm in a genetic algorithm that is going to be happening initially population is there so in a genetic algorithm i am going to take the i i make an announcement uh, tomorrow i am going to finalize the, uh, i am going to pick up the uh, 15 students for the cricket team then under students came these all are under are my solution all are my so solutions keep in your mind means possible solution solution means and right or wrong doesn't matter i have a question i have a solution solution need not be always correct it may be right or wrong so i have a problem when i called all the students that came out and are under students among this 100 i have to pick up then what you have to do i have a cost function what is your cost function you have to define stamina he has to play minimum 2 hours in the ground without uh struggling uh, then he, he has to face the ball he has to throw ball quickly he has to uh, catch and throw immediately uh, in which direction is bowling how it is uh, uh, moving uh, how fast is uh, running in between the wickets these are the parameters uh, what is the game strategy when it is the ball is in this direction like that if a new ball is how to play old ball is how to play so these are all are your cost function then these are the parameters and keep in your mind those are cost functions boy came and playing you are going to observe how he is playing whether he is running fast whether he is moving or not how is the if it is a fielder how he is throwing and which direction he is throwing whether it is the full bounce or half bounce how is so if it is keeper how is holding how how to react immediately so these are things you are observing and from that you are going to pick up but out of 100 all unders are your solutions but right now these 100 solutions are not up to the mark you have to discard but if once we discard you can't send the team to the tournament so then what you have to do among 100 among 100 50 are going to select among them you are compromising your threshold level right now little bit lower down and you are filtering some 50 those who are doing worst among them you are truncating remaining 50 you are going to take up then this 50 is not up to the mark keep it in your mind this is not up to the mark uh, and according your test they are not performing the uh, game then what i have to do then i am going to act up i am going to find their fitness then i will understand oh this fellow has this much fitness this fellow has this much fitness this fellow has this fitness so i have to give instruction to this boy catch this way throw this way run this way like this uh, and uh, person to person it is changes the instructions so the trainer will guide so when he is guiding means is a crossover is doing when i am doing crossover after crossover after some uh, trials uh, his performance is change then after that what happen then sir i think network issue is there please wait some time meanwhile i am forwarded the link of today's attendance come feedback सर डिस्कनेक्ट अ सर मल्ल जॉन अवतारा सर
So we will wait for a few more minutes, few more minutes, so two minutes or three minutes. Sir will again coming. Meanwhile, you are all asked that uh, presentations, uh, links and all you are uh, requested. There, of course, uh, yesterday's presentations also I have not received so far. Uh, once I received, I will forward a mail to you, to all the uh, participants, to all the participants as a presentation, as a PPT, as in the PDF format. As a day one, I received, I think, a day one uh, presentations, I am already forwarded to all the participants. But for the yesterday's and today's presentations, For yesterday's and today's presentations, still I have not received. Once I received, I will forward it. I have already requested all the resource persons. They are sending. Once uh, they are sent, come to send that to my mail, I will forward it to you. No doubt. But meanwhile, if you want to take that as a complete uh, recordings, uh, we are already we are going, we are already forwarding. Uh, that uh, YouTube links instead of uh, Zoom links, instead of a Zoom video, where you are, I, I think all the participants are facing the problem. Zoom recordings with high MB problems are, I think all are facing that pro particular problem. So therefore, uh, we are already, you are observed that YouTube, live YouTube is going on. That links also we are sharing to you. It is very easy. That links is sharing of that link is very easy to you to receive that particular one. Whereas Zoom recordings are available. We are already recorded. We are, we are going to record every session. But uh, sending that video as it is zoom video is a major constraint everyone should face that problem that is the reason especially in this particular session as a session second series of the stp we are going to we are giving that youtube live so we are forwarding that all youtube links to you every day and also at the end of the session end of the complete uh, series we are forwarding to your mail ids abhinav jain we are going to place we are going to put that with ppts also once we receive that uh, because every resource person are accepted to send the ppts no doubt so they are giving once they are we received that ppts we will send to you that is, for day one, we are already received that I, we are already uh, forwarded the mails to you, all the participants. But from day two and day three, still I am not received. As a day two, I have already uh, requested through a mail, sir, kindly send the PPTs for this participation, for the participants. Uh, so, Vijay Lakshmi, we are, you are asked that. One sec, one second, sir. Someone asked the feedback link. I am forwarding that. So once I received all the PPTs as available as one. Uh, yesterday, so that is very important thing is uh, tomorrow that 
tomorrow's session is completely uh, is on uh, microwave studio cst microwave studio i think we received so many uh, inputs from the series 1 as sir we want to go for designing of memo antennas where that is hfss ansys has some limitations are there ansys should not give the complete analysis in the public domain of the presentations as like this what we are representing so they want to go for ansys is giving that separately as a chargeable base that is the reason they are they have a limited version is there now the for the designing of all these advanced type of antennas tomorrow completely from morning 9 10 o'clock to 12 at 12 o'clock and again 2 to 4 o'clock microwave cst studio the people are coming from the directly cst people that is the reason i think you are all observed that you were uh, Uh, that is a schedule jyoti electronics from ahmedabad they are taking the session from tomorrow as a two complete sessions on microwave studio cst microwave studio so you have any questions on that particular advanced type of antennas so be ready with tomorrow that is application engineer mr karthik will deal the sessions so my sincere request is your active participation is more important so there very because the cst people generally they don't come to the public domain with uh, all request because we, i know the rap with the cst so i requested several times so he accepted our uh, invitation then tomorrow completely day session morning session and afternoon sessions are dealed by cst microwave studio people sir good afternoon sir sir uh, sir good afternoon sir good afternoon uh, sir please, uh, sir please. now uh, some network issue came here uh, now i will explain without the slides sir briefly sir concept i will explain okay i will conclude uh, another 5 10 minutes is it okay sir hello okay sir okay sir 5 to 10 minutes is not an issue sir uh, because uh, i don't know why the connection is not coming yeah so yeah. just now power gone and, oh that's uh, the correct sir uh, uh, that is a problem just now so far it is on uh, ups so now ups also down mm -hmm. so now i'm trying to wait for the power but anyhow i'll uh, address briefly uh, yes. so that uh, uh, it will be meaningful meanwhile power comes means i'll uh, share the ppts okay, okay sir okay now uh, 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 is it audible yes sir uh, audible sir right uh, now so you have to select the candidates from the uh, test then after getting you have to give the inputs to them play like this 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 then before and after if you see that their casts are changed their bowling pattern and everything is changed so what do you mean that with your training Uh, the caches are changed and they are going to perform nicely and uh, so similarly here also we are going to conduct the several tests and uh, test to test test uh, and their uh, uh, performance also going to be changed so you are going to try so uh, last test you did mistake like this you have to do like this then improve this way think this way do this way and like the teacher will uh, give the solution uh, before going to next test again the another test will be over so every test the boy is going to keep on changing his uh, concept is going to build up so finally what will happen uh, after four five iterations uh, the boy will uh, reach to the uh, right candidate to solve the problem so what you are doing in the day to day life to select the best candidate for your problem to solve the your project work or whatever that uh, similarly in this field also using the algorithm Uh, initially we are going to generate the population uh, say i have a function a function has two parameters x and y and uh, what is x value what is y value for that so to get the value between 0 to 5 i am going to get the uh, some 100 populations so 0 comma 1 0 comma 2 1 comma 2 3 comma 5 like that 
So I'll get a hundred populations. These hundred populations are solutions for my problem. Solutions. Whether solution is correct or wrong, that is a different story. How do you know that solution is correct or not? I am going to substitute this into cost function. If, if the cost function is zero, then I can say that my solution is correct. Or my this is I'm going to accept the right population for my problem. So like that, we are going to do. So if they are not performing properly and if the cost function is very high, we are going to truncate. And uh, those who are above the threshold, you have to select them. And if necessary, you have to give some training. Means you have to change their characteristics. If you change the characteristics, they are going to get the uh, better qualities. And that is called a crossover. After crossover, still if you are not happy and to improve further, to reduce the error with the help of the fitness function, once you understand the fitness function, how much they got it after the crossover, then you, with the help of the mutation operation, you fine tuning is required. Once you do the fine tuning and your solution candidates characteristics are drastically going to be changed and at the end, you are going to get the desired solution for the given problem. So like that, we are going to do that. I think uh, current came, uh, power came, just I will try. Sir, now I'm yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now I'll continue. Just a minute. Uh, I, I switch on the mobile, mobile also. Yeah. Now you see that. Uh, the normalized LMS is giving a better performance and it is giving a converged quickly. So it takes less, less iterations. So from that you can understand. Without this uh, convergence plot, uh, very difficult to understand which one is giving a better results. So you have to explain like this. So if you explain this much information, uh, if you give this much information to the boy, boy will uh, appreciate. Simply if you give as uh, this is 10, this is 20, so hence it is uh, faster. Uh, that is not the way. You have to tell the how it is stable. And if you give the one uh, live example, and he never forget. Even he wants to forget, it is not possible. So whenever uh, stableness will come, uh, he will recollect your name. Oh, Sar has explained that way, very beautifully like that. So you should give the relevant examples, uh, suitable. Don't give the examples randomly something, nonsense things. Uh, it is not correct. We find the suitable things and give that and relevant one and boy will appreciate. Then these are the recursive algorithms to improve the further. And uh, this is another method. So quickly I'm going uh, to another concept. So different, uh, this is a, a planar array and this is RLS, this is the CMA. And after that you have to make the uh, comparisons and uh, from the comparison only came to know that which one is good or uh, uh, which one is giving better and which one is uh, giving less, uh, taking less time to converge uh, and all these things. So once that is over, you can go for the uh, kernel based algorithm. So these are the different and number of algorithms are there. Uh, very difficult to address all the things. Just I'm giving the idea of that. At least uh, you should know uh, what are the mechanisms are there, how it is going to be done. So I'm going to explain briefly uh, GA. Uh, now you can look at here. Uh, this is the uh, LMS algorithm. Uh, this is a desired signal you are getting, and this is unwanted signal you are going to get it, and you can't stop it because unwanted also coming uh, at a different directions, and uh, your antenna is captured the signal, 
and you need to get the desired output here and these weights are going to be controlled by the help of lms algorithm so this lms algorithm is uh, 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 what you call it, developed on the uh, dsp platform uh, with the help of T uh, tms uh, process and all so high speed uh, uh, dsp uh, on this platform uh, when you develop this algorithm and uh, it will compute the uh, quickly and in, uh, in online so that you will get the desired output then uh, this already have seen and uh, what are the steps are involved in lms algorithm you have to define the parameters what is the d value the distance between the elements number of elements then uh, desired signal direction unwanted signal directions step size side loss beam width number of iterations and all these parameters you have to specify clearly then you have to construct the input signal oh, what is the your signal coming and uh, noise floor uh, in which direction noise is coming and how it is what is the characteristics and all and you have to define uh, then once it is over then you have to uh, develop the you have to update the weights so you have to find the cost function so you have to calculate the error calculation that is called a cost function you have to calculate the error calculation and with the help of the step function uh, then present value and keep on uh, update the your weights so you are keep it in the loop so once the error will be zero or one uh, either or uh, if you are getting good results you have to come out so termination so two things are there you have to ask to uh, run the algorithm till the error will become zero or uh, if you got the better results you have to stop uh, if sometimes error is not zero and uh, you are not getting better results and you have to ask them to complete uh, iterations till uh, last iteration so which one is uh, uh, going to complete uh, early and the and immediately algorithm will be terminated so assume that error will be zero then you can come out or uh, uh, even if the error is zero you want to get the performance completely you want to observe so ask them to run uh, completely so how you are going to write the algorithm that is very important then uh, uh, develop the what do you call the uh, array factor and once you got the weights you have to compute in the array factor and get it then finally plot so these are the six steps to write the lms algorithm now we are discussing the what is the lms algorithm how to develop and all and with the help of these six steps we can develop so hardly 40 lines will come so here around the four, uh, seven eight lines these are very simple d is equal to 0.5 n is equal to 10 and desired signal is 60 like that here 10 steps then uh, signal uh, another four five steps maximum uh, what is the signal nature and all these things uh, there is sign or echo sign or whatever that uh, what is the noise is the white gaussian or uh, what is the noise chart so another four five lines then uh, this algorithm uh, this step hardly four lines not not more than present value step value then multiplication with the error function and uh, one loop for loop so another 10 lines so uh, by the time 30 then uh, this is a part of uh, in the termination itself so 30 then uh, plotting is uh, two lines uh, sorry array factor is one line uh, and for loop then another two lines so hardly 35 40 lines more not more than that so we will get the results then generic algorithm so this is one of the uh, heuristic algorithm and it is uh, efficient and effective technique for the optimization area so we will get a results in a quickly uh in acceptable range so what are the steps involved uh, chromosomes initialization selection crossover mutation and termination so terminology is different just now you have seen the lms there we are not seen chromosome and all this since selection and all but there also it is happening but it is different there is a weight present step size updation like that is going on here a uh, crossover means the character of the thing so uh, what is the characteristics you have to uh, define then initialize uh, you take the population maybe 100 100 solutions are there uh, among them you have to find one how to select that so use the selection so one is at the end not immediately so you have to go for the selection criteria so different techniques with the help of the cost function you find the cost function fitness and you apply you pass the all the initial population to the Uh, cost function you make it a rank which one is giving uh, good performance that you in the top and the worst one at the bottom you have to make it uh, some order ascending or descending or top to bottom or bo uh, down to up 
So you have to arrange and fix it the threshold level. And below the threshold, you have to discard. Once it is uh, discarded, the selection process is over. Here, a number of techniques are there. Just I'm giving the idea here, selection process. Then after selection, crossover is there. This crossover means further you are changing the characteristics, the chromosome construction. Uh, again, you have to map it and mutation and termination. So you can see that uh, crossover construction, generation of the initial population, evaluation of the fitness function. Uh, you can use the uh, roulette builder and rank selection, tournament selection, uh, different. Then uh, after that, you have to generate the new population with the help of mutation and crossover operation. And then finally, you have to terminate. Uh, if you got the results, you, you come out. Otherwise, you ask them to uh, repeat again and again uh, until the uh, last uh, uh, iteration is going to be completed or loop is going to be completed. Then uh, assume that this is the, my uh, test function. Uh, say this is my test function, benchmark function, uh, Rosenberg. And uh, this is my uh, function. Uh, then uh, dimensions. Uh, uh, your uh, D may be two or three or uh, N. Uh, right now, I have taken two, X1 and X2. So my D is equal to two only, two dimensional. If it is D is equal to two dimensional. If it is uh, D is equal to 10, is a 10 dimensional uh, Rosenberg. So 10 variables are there. So 10 means X1, X2, X3, X10. Right now I have two only, X1, X2. And it is uh, based on this, you can substitute and uh, you want to find the minima. Uh, when I'll get the minima, if you plot it in a 3D, I got like this using MATLAB. Then uh, uh, if you refer the any literature survey, uh, when you substitute one, one, you'll get the uh, function value zero. So your global minima is zero at one, one. How do you know that one, one? Right now, I don't know. So normally what you're going to do in the trial and error method, you substitute zero, zero in the equation. What is the value? Then zero, one, one, zero, one, like that. So uh, you have a range one to 10, say here, uh, one to, uh, what is that? Minus 10 to plus 10. You look at here. X1 is minus 10 to plus 10. X2 is uh, minus 6 to plus 6. It can be same or different also. So X1 is minus 10 to plus 10 variation. X2 is minus uh, 6 to plus 6. Uh, and you are going to substitute here. So how many values will come? Uh, X comma Y, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, minus 10, minus uh, 0, like that. Infinite values are there. Uh, because of pop fractions also 0 0.1, 0 0.2, like that. So infinite values you have to test. That is a trial and error method. Sometimes you got the answer at uh, 1, 1, but you don't know whether it's 1, 1 or not. So you have to do all these things because I, I don't know the uh, zero is the answer. Right now you know that, but uh, before going to that, uh, maybe I don't know if minus one also answer, minus two also answered maybe. So we don't know what is the minimum value right now. So you have to perform all these things. Uh, then finally you got the answer. So to get it, uh, what you are doing in a genetic algorithm or LMS or any evolution algorithm, these are the your populations. You see that all the black colors. These all are uh, randomly you are selected. And this is your answer in the pink color in the center. So here in the initially uh, spreaded randomly, then uh, iteration by iteration. Uh, I'm going to pass these values to the cost function. I will find out the error. Uh, if it is uh, more, then I will uh, discard it. I modify, I can go back like that after a few iterations. So these all these uh, populations are coming, 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 closer and closer. And uh, at the end, uh, the last iteration, I'll get the answer. So what is that answer? Uh, one, one. So at one, one, my minimum value is zero. So when I substitute one, one, I got the zero. So zero is the answer. So like that, you have to find. Then what is the crossover? So before and after. So this is my crossover. This is my chromosome construction in a binary form. You can uh, represent in a different way. How you are going to write the code is decides binary or a, a decimal hour. So this is my binary form and the binary value is 175. And this is another chromosome before crossover, 240. So these two are my candidates. These are my solutions. Whether the, this is correct or not, one of the possible solution. Uh, how do you know that is correct or not? If you substitute the equation, if you get it the less error or zero, then these two are valid. When I substitute, I'm not getting. So I have to go for crossover. So only right now these two are available, uh, one the possible solutions. From this, I have to get the solution. So I'm applying the crossover. And then uh, first four is as it is, one zero, one zero as it is. And the last one, 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 these are mapped. So interchanging, you try to look at here. So here, uh, all ones. Then uh, this is uh, all. So here, uh, last four ones, 
is mapped with all four zeros in the next chromosome. So one zero one zero followed by all zeros. Whereas before iteration, uh, all ones. Similarly, four ones followed by four zeros before crossover. After crossover, all ones came because it is interchanged. So once it is interchanged, crossover is takes place. What is the new value? Uh, before crossover is one seventy five. After crossover, one sixty. This is one of the possible solution. Now the characteristics are changed. Uh, before crossover, two forty. Uh, after crossover, two fifty five. So uh, before test, boy has got ten uh, marks out of twenty. Then you have given some uh, training. You are uh, lagging here. You are not understand. You study this. You you uh, you, you have educated. Then you test is connected. You got uh, earlier ten. Now twelve got it. Then. Uh, again, you are trying. Again, you got it. Uh, but in the process, he is not getting. Then you have to throw. Then uh, you can't select it for the team. Uh, you first test, you got ten marks. Second test, twelve. Third test, fourteen. As if it is goes on in increasing, then you are going to select it. First, you got ten. Second iteration, you got uh, uh, five. Third iteration, you got two. Then, uh, if you are doing crossover here uh, after iteration by iteration, if it is getting a uh, uh, performance is degrading. Then you have to discard it. Don't think that always it improves. So every iteration you will get a uh, best and worst. So best one you have to pick up, and worst things you have to discard. Then if it is good, you have to accept. But if you are not uh, happy with that, you have to do fine tuning. Then how to do fine tuning? So assume that I have this one one zero one zero. Then one seventy is available. I want another case. So what is the mutation? One bit I am going to mutate. So before operation one seventy one seventy. Is closer to my answer. So when I do the modification, I got the 170. Actually, I want 171. So I did the crossover mutation. I I should not apply for the crossover. If I do the crossover, this 170 go to something else. So I don't want. So it, it, once it is uh, acceptable range, if you do fine tuning, your performance is going to be improved. So error will be decreases. So like this, the crossover mutation operation will take place. So every iteration, you are going to improve the Uh, uh what you call the uh, uh, performance of the system or at the same time uh, cost function is going to be minimized it depends on the problem so you can do the like this okay so now i will stop it whenever the time permits uh, we will discuss the uh, continuation of this uh, algorithms thank you sir uh, any doubts uh, till now because uh, uh, it is endless we can take but is not correct uh, as uh, human psychology uh, Continuously, we can't take more than two hours. But uh, uh, due to power failure and other reasons, I extended the another twenty minutes. So otherwise, I'll start the exactly two hours. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any doubts, sir? Sir, you can ask the any questions are there in the chat box. I'll answer. Actually, two questions are there, sir. But uh, same situation what I faced just now. Okay. Uh, that power because of the power failure, I missed that one. Are you there? Anyone may ask the two uh, questions. Sir, yes, sir, I am there, sir, Kavita. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you ask, madam. Then I will respond. Good evening, sir. I small. Yeah. I had a very small doubt, sir. Actually, uh, oh. Oh. Uh, there was a slide where you were saying that uh, the pattern synthesis, antenna pattern synthesis, okay. is a problem of non-linear optimization. Okay. Why are it as non-linear there, sir? No, no, no. See, these optimization techniques can be used in linear or non-linear problems, and okay. especially our problems depends on the problem. When you take the plot, it is a non-linear nature because okay. uh, com completely changes the your characteristics uh, time to time. And especially in uh, mobile communication, your patterns are uh, okay. highly dynamic, and when I'm trying to play, get the equations, it is non-linear nature. Yes, sir. That is a. Then we are calling. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Okay, fine. Thank you very much, okay, sir. Okay, ma'am. Sir, yes, Anuraj, you want to ask, sir? Yes, sir. Anuraj asked that one question, sir. Okay, sir. Yes, sir in Anuraj slide number thirty. Ah. Ah, sir. In okay. slide number thirty-five. Okay. Uh, more place showing the deep null. Ah. Uh, but 35. you told only one value, sir. What about remaining? Sir, sir, okay. This is a, a good, good question. Sir, this is based on the array factor. Based on the array factor. When you try to plot the array factor, we will get so many nulls. So many nulls. Based on the your equation, nulls are coming. 
for example uh, now 35 slide slide you look at here so uh, can you able to see the my cursor yes sir uh, now i put the cursor here i put the cursor here at 30 degrees look at here at 30 degrees we have the uh, first side lobe at 30 degrees first side lobe is there this is due to your ira factor based on your design based on your uh, algorithm we got it and you are going to accept this 30 degrees uh, first side lobe first side lobe are you following right say so assume that if i don't want for my application at 30 degrees null is coming uh, unwanted signal is coming means you have to put 30 degrees null once if you place a null in your algorithm in the 30 degrees when you place a null in a in all algorithm in the 30 degrees and definitely you will get a null and your algorithm or your system further may not receive the signal in that direction if the signal comes i hope you catch my point is the default you have so many nulls and so many side lobes that is due to your array factor array factor function is itself because it is a sine function sine or cosine when you plot it sine and cosine you will get the main beam with so many uh, nulls only and if you, this is a sync function actually it is a sync function you try to plot it in a in a signals and the systems domain it is sin x by x function so it is a sync what is a sync main beam then so many uh, side lobes are there if you take it the modulus are you able to follow recolor the uh, once again uh, signals and system uh, your array factor is closer to the sync function or those who are gone through the uh, antennas book uh, it is a sync function so when you plot its sync function in a magnitude domain magnitude plot we have a main beam followed by so many peaks that is due to your function so similarly here also based on your array factor based on your array factor equation these side lobes are coming it is default and in that default if you assume that you don't want signal at 30 degrees for example if you don't want signal at 30 degrees in your algorithm you place it null at 30 degrees and run the algorithm and definitely you will get it uh, first side lobe is going to be suppressed in our case here i have considered uh, i have considered uh, what is the null minus 30 Uh, when i place a mi minus 30 in minus 30 exactly minus 30 null is there you look at here null is there and you see that uh, in a uh, uh, 21 elements in a standard algorithm we have the peak so, uh, did you catch my here look at here undesired signal 30 degrees this is mi minus 30 deep null is coming due to standard algorithm at 51 and uh, with a 21 slightly deviated 9 30 degrees minus 30 degrees and uh, i place a null here forcefully if i am not going to place a null then here also i will get the signal similarly wherever you want uh, null you can place it and there you can uh, suppress signal in that direction so that your system is unable to receive the signal i think uh, understand the my did you got the answer did you understand yes sir yes sir right, he, right. He, he is he is actually that microphone problem is there sir he okay, said sir. that now it is clear sir he is clearly given that okay way. sir very simple when you want a null uh, in a particular direction you have to place so that your side lobe is going to be suppressed normally we have side lobes and many nulls are due to your array factor is coming anyway those are unwanted for us right sir anyone is there to ask the questions please sir anyway no one is there sir okay, so i am very much thankful to uh, once again thank for you, kind thank accepting you, that immediately you are accepted when we request for okay, uh, sir, uh, act you, as a resource you. person in this particular uh, series as a okay sir good uh, uh, whenever it is possible uh, in the next uh, uh, series if i am free definitely 
I will yes, uh, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, support, sir. sir. No doubt. Thank you very so, much, sir. Once again, thank uh, you, yeah, sir. Yeah. We will discuss the continuation of this also. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Huh? That okay, I am sir. thinking once uh, 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 at the closing time, I am thinking like that. So okay, I sir. request once again, sir, for the second, third series also, we will uh, Definitely, share sir. that. Uh, you uh, at the time, I will take only 10-15 minutes brief uh, introduction of this and I will concentrate yes, the uh, continuation of this, sir, where we are uh, yes. stopped. Hmm? Sure, sir. Sir. Right, sir. Right, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Right, Thank sir. you, sir. Okay, sir. Right, right. Thank you to all. Thank you. Oh. So, my dear participants, please, tomorrow morning the session will start again, sharp at 10 o'clock, with uh, Jyoti Electronics, as well as my CST Microwave Studio people are taking the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.